Hello everyone, it's Farah here. It's another server smash. Here we go. Uh, I am Farah. I'll be your main caster today. I'm joined by Char. When you say hello, Char. Hello. Awesome. Right. So we're just gonna wing it here with the audio mic settings. We'll just see how it works, and everyone can chat. Can shout to us if we're doing good or doing bad. So today is server smash fifty nine, and it is against uh, Miller playing the Vanu Sovereignty and Cobalt playing the Terran Republic. We are on. If I have a look on the map. Amrish! It's a new Amrish! So, you looking at this map, give us your gut reaction to this map. What do you think? This is the old map, right? No. The old map actually had you fighting over Tuma's tech plant, and it was a kind of an in-between cargo facility in Skylands. Everything's been shifted and jaunted ever so slightly, so it's perfectly east versus west. It did mean we had to cut off some territory on the left, but you, know, you never fought over there anywhere, so just, just don't pinch attention to that. Well, especially not with the new rules, you won't be fighting over there, you'd hope. Yes, that is true. So, um, basically today, uh, we have a number of uh, systems and changes uh, on Service Smashing this year, and, and uh, tell you what, why don't you talk about the map, how you think about it, I'm going to tweak some sound settings and see if I can get some background music going. Well, it looks like, for the VS side at least, which I believe is in Miller, uh, the South Bank is probably going to be really protected, and they can attack from there if they want to. Um, they're going to have to push into a tech plant, which is a lot easier than pushing into our active firearms core. That's hard. Uh, Probably the Ascent is going to be a major one. Go straight to Raven Landing, try and get the Ascent. Uh, they'd have to be careful about Crook's headquarters. You'd imagine it'd be hard to take, but uh, in that lane they're going to have to push Bastion, which is just never going to happen in a million years. Uh, TR have Ikonum, which is unfair as hell, because that base is absolute cancer and should not even be on the map. So why is it even still there? But NC Arsenal is going to be a really contentious cap. Especially with the new, well, not new, but uh, the changes to three-point bases. Uh, that should go through pretty... Horrendously, there'll be a meat grinder over there in the first seven minutes, no doubt. Yeah, so we did notice that there was a Sunderer approach coming in from the eastern side for... You've seen NCR that in the old demo games, right? Yeah, Where you yeah, drive yeah. them up from the right hand side. So, as we look at the map... Uh, sorry, as we're changing it. Uh, basically, what we've got here is... This match is 192 versus 192. It's Miller versus Cobalt. I believe there's a gentleman's agreement for uh, maxes and possibly air lock-ons, but we will find out. Um, the title should be updated. Awesome. Uh, other things, we'll be playing for two 45 minute halves. And uh, yeah, someone needs to tell me. Yeah, so we're playing for two 45 minute halves. Uh, and then what happens is this time around we'll be swapping uh, warp gates. So everyone that's Miller playing as the Vanu Sovereignty is going to go to the western warp gate, and everyone that's TR from Cobalt is going to go to the eastern warp gate. And we're going to restart the whole thing, and then hey presto, uh, it kind of eliminates uh, the. Uh, you know, the, the, any bias presumed what, what about from what they're staying, TRBS, exactly, or are they exactly. going to swap factions as well? No, no, the, 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 they'll keep their factions today, so they're just testing warp gate changes. So I guess then we'll both have a try at fighting from my side of the map then, so... It'll really be up to who deals with the advantages and disadvantages of each sector in each half. Hmm, yeah, I think he's got a point. With 45 minutes, here. it's going to be very much the opening move that decides the entire game. So anyway, as we go on to talk about the map here, because we're going to start in about 12 minutes, um, as we're seeing in the north, we have NC Arsenal, it's a three-point base, it's going to be very meat grinding, but the fact is, once the base ticks down, it will be captured. It's not like it's going to last, last for a long period of time, uh, going for eternity. This base will go through, however, you might see more of an emphasis on shorter base captures, such as Araxicom Network Hub and Tumas Cargo Facility, because they are, oh, and Barrack Electrical, because they are four-minute uh, quick cap bases. It should be noted that Rockslide Outlook is also not in play because there's a free connection with the Eastern Warp Gate and not from the Western. And that means that as we move south, um, Skull Bleep Mountain, also, you know, the Ascent, is going to be a central aspect of this particular map. Warp over there. So, one thing I could just add mm -hmm. the VS side in this set, well, in this set, pose on the VS side, on the right hand side, will uh, have a big advantage with Barrack Electrical, especially with Max as disabled because. Uh, those guys can get a Sunder inside Bark, and if you've ever tried to assault Bark, there's a Sunder inside, it's impossible. Tweaking audio here. Alright, I've dumped Char's uh, volume down ever so slightly, so give me an update in two minutes, and that'll be awesome. Right, so. Does that sound fine to you, Farah? Or is it, uh, is it the settings? Well, people complain that uh, co casters are always a little bit quiet, so I've kind of boosted your gain, but we'll see how it goes now. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so at the ascent. 
Uh, the uh, western warp gate will approach from Bastion into Lithcorp Central. The south is going to come from Rax's Firearms Corp into Raven's Landing. And then you're going to have this very much north-south approach uh, into the ascent. Whether or not they try and cut each other off at Lithcorp Central and Raven's Landing and then kind of cut off the ascent entirely and get it for free? Don't know. See what we've got going here. Um, then finally in the south, we don't actually have a large outpost going on in the south, but we do have the tussle between Tumas Tech Plant and uh, Araxis Firearms Corp. Both bases, although you probably have to favour in terms of air pools, um, Araxis Firearms has got the easier time of getting access to an air terminal, uh, because it's right next to the spawns, where Tumas Terminal's somewhere way up in the stratosphere in the top of the base. However, there is West Pass Tower as well, I suppose, to pull air from. And then you've got Barrack Electrical and that kind of back and forth potentially for lane options, so we'll see how this uh, map turns out to playing. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Right. Um, now, I guess, if you have no maxes as an experiment, right? And right. the air game is going to be kind of lock-on free, I believe. Um, and we'll find out soon. And the reduced numbers in the air squad. 192 well. and 192 as well. I mean, how does that kind of change so your game? I think there's actually limits, physical limits, on how big you can make the air force as well. Oh, okay. So, right, fair enough. So, I, I guess what I'm getting at is that without maxes and max crashes, and because it's 45 minute timers, it's almost all opening plays. It's not like two whole hours of, of, yeah, of this, solid gameplay. It's entirely the, the opening moves against opening moves. So, yeah, and, and I, I, so you're, you're really not going to potentially be pushing into Ikena Biolab, which is a horrendous base to attack, or the easier Sungry Amp Station may or may not. You might only have small shifts pushing off the initial starting line. Um, uh, would, would you reckon? I mean, is, are we going to see a lot more uses of Sunders? And how do you destroy a Sunder chain without, you know, AV Maxis? You can pull AV Maxis. You can pull AV. It's just on him for Maxis that banned, I think. Okay, cool. Well, I guess uh, we'll take a quick second here, guys, to talk about this. <laughs> One sec. This new overlay has been worked on by, by Lampjaw. So he's uh, basically building us up a new system similar to what we had in the past, but there's going to be more functionality. So rather than relying on one person setting it all up, anyone can come in and modularize it. So it's really in its infancy at the moment. So we won't have stats or overlays or listings or stuff like that for you today. Uh, heck, I don't even know if the bug's going to work. So today our referee is Justicia, and Justicia has a Sharpie and a napkin. And he's the guy who's going to basically make all the calls and say... What's left time of the clock? Who's got the most scores? By the way, the scores, they work on the principle of uh, two halves combined. So whatever the score is after the first half, we'll add that to the score of the second half. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, whatever. You know, production value, jazz hands. We'll, we'll see how this goes. It's all good, right? Uh, what we got here? Seven minutes, right? So as I was saying, right, to you, the opening play, what do you do? Like... Do you go for the small four-minute capture bases like Araxcom Network Hub and Tumas Cargo Facility, allow the larger bases to perhaps take them? Because realistically speaking, only NC Arsenal is the long base cap. You've got Network Hub, Lithcorp, Ravens, they all need to defend it. I mean, I suppose you can do some sort of interdiction work in the center to keep the enemy off the point so you can get ascent for free quicker. But the south has also got a fight on, so really it could be a north-south divide here at the beginning. I mean, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, if you're the VS, you have two bases to cap for free, so that's Raven Landing and Rock Slider. Just get those going. Um, the VS should have advantage in Barrack. You to get Sunderers in there, so you can play with Underpop on Barrack Electrical. You can take that base 4060 with, with uh, Sunderers. Uh, ah, I've just been told. Be... Maxes is only anti infantry Maxes yeah, that only, are banned. Yeah, it's only AV and AA Maxes that are allowed. AI, AI are banned. So that will make a big difference, I guess, for the air, making your you own lane. You don't want to pull, like, if you pull, if 45 minutes to go. You can't, like, throw your resources in like that. Like, if you pull AV maxes, like a squad, you'll just lose your resources for the rest of the game. Now, here's the thing for you, right? A really skilled person with a pounder max can still kill infantry pretty yeah, effectively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pounders are better than comets, so you can still have anti-infantry with pounders. So do you think we'll see that today, lots of maxes just using AV against infantry? I think they'll probably try it, because that's probably why they've gone TR, but I don't think it's that effective. You'll just cripple your resources, to be honest. Uh, and well-used Sundra is uh, just so much better. But you can use, there's places on the map where you can use Maxes, but you can't use Sunderers. So actually, they'll probably mean that the TR side will focus those more. Like, Barrack is it's Sunderer mainly, uh, but two as Cargo is a really infantry oriented base. Because you want to get inside that building and do a, a point hold. You think? Um, I get it. No, the thing is, can't, uh, I might be delusional here. I thought, yeah, no, vehicles can get inside. Tumas Cargo Facility, you can actually drive up uh, vehicles up these staircases on the side, right? 
And then you can take Sunders and daisy chain them actually inside the building if you wanted to. I'm not I'm not entirely sure anyone's actually gonna do that, and I wonder how much R and D people have put into a friendly server smash, but you know, force multipliers and all that. Uh, Correct good network code would be good for the pound of access because that base is just a cluster frack. And Barrack Electrical, as just like Tumas Cargo, is another Sunder base that you can just, you know, choke them inside the building. And then once you're inside, uh, if the vehicle terminal is destroyed, it's such a long drive from Aramex or from Cryobank or High Roads. It's, it's, it's easy from High Roads. You can get it around the top of the mountains and then just drop it in. It's for, that's why I was saying the VS have the mansion mm, on the base, because right, right. Yeah, you, can, yeah. you can get it into the mountains and then you can drop it on top. It's pretty overpowered. Cool, right. And uh, I suppose... Uh, it, would you do any interdiction play at Lithcorp Central or Raven's Landing? Would you try and kind of mess with the enemy and try and give yourself an ascent? Like, if you just sent two squads maybe to keep a guy off the cap point, you think... I, I don't know if you could... I wouldn't bother, because with interdiction play, I think that's for the longer games, is to get, like, a snowballing advantage. But so in a 45-minute game play... For a two-hour game, but I think in 45 right. minutes, interdiction is just a waste of force. Just make every, sure... Every man counts. Just make sure that your point is captured and flipping, and then just move off and move on. Term yeah, exactly. Get the shorter base captures, and then when the ascent becomes vulnerable, or when you know NC Arsenal is on like its halfway pointer, you know, then come back and hit it hard, right? Yeah, exactly. Like if, I, if I'm VS, I'm just looking to all the all the lines of bases that are just four minute caps. So that's the far south and the far north. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't bother with the middle where it just stops the bastion. I just I just get the ascent. Make sure you get that, and then just stop there. Just rely on harassing Lithcorp. Keep it ticking down. And then try and get in the north. You have like North Grove Post, which is really easy to hold with Sunderers. You want if you're if you're VS, you want to be going for all the vehicle bases because you don't have power maxes. So I'd go North Grove Post, call that with Sunderers. Aramax Chemicals, a very vehicle heavy base. Go through that. Go to Toromar, which isn't, isn't vehicle heavy, but you can use your air force there. Just ignore all the max bases that are in the interior. Mm -hmm. That's you're never going to capture in a 45 minute game. Like it's just not going to happen. Uh, it takes 45 minutes to capture the base by itself. It's such a long grind to, to wear it down elsewhere. So, uh, yeah, I'm keen. What about up in the north, between Moss Ravine and North Grove Post, as you said, right? That's that's the one area where we don't actually have a neutral base between the factions. These go straight in at each other. Do you see that moving anywhere? Uh, both of those bases are pretty easy to capture. So, um, if I was VS, I want to be the first people on North Grove Post and get some Sunderers pulled. Do you think maybe that NC Arsenal is actually going to be light numbers and we'll see heavy fighting to the north and south of NC Arsenal with numbers only going into NC Arsenal when it gets close to capture points? I think it's the kind of thing where I could see the illusion, uh, the allure, sorry, of dropping a load of people on there. But I can imagine the people who drop a lot of numbers will get either the North Grove post or Moss Ravine pushed and they'll start to panic. So sure. I will right. not commit large forces there. So. Why don't you go to your warp gate and I will head off uh, and play an intro and then we'll be right back in two seconds. Where we come from, we each fight for loyalty, for freedom, or perhaps enlightenment, but not here. Here we cast aside our disparate beliefs, our barriers and preconceived notions, and band together as a global force to engage in the largest competitive battles the world has ever seen. We are the squads, the platoons, the empires and servers, full of players coordinating a complex game of strategy and tactics. This is where combined arms happen. This is where war comes to play. This is Server Smash. Yeah, right. 37 seconds. I have no idea what happens when that clock reaches zero. Lambjaw didn't tell me. He just went to bed and posted this at 2 o'clock in my time in the afternoon. So, for all I know, it'll stop at zero and then I'll need to put it in a game clock. Or it's going to tick up the way and, and start, or, or tick down. You know, it, it's a mystery to me as it is you guys. So I really am maybe, looking maybe forward to this. Maybe game will crash and all your funds will get transferred yeah, to the account. No, I don't do that. Eight, oh, wow. Seven, okay, so six, referee isn't obviously five, looking at the same clock as four, I am. So this is going to be interesting. Two, one. Go, go, go. Match start. Good there luck. we go. We are, we are going. Ignore the fact that the clock's three seconds out. It's the referee clock that really matters. We'll go get this sorted out. This is why we're testing season. Oh, check that out. It's restarted on a two-hour timer. That's really cool. I'm easily impressed. Right. Uh, typical Air Force pushing out. 
Uh, why don't the stream chat is in chat? Tell me what the game audio is like. See how it is. Uh, if it's too quiet, too loud, give me a shout and I'll. I'll Looks like a lot of uh, yes, heading to Chivas Cargo. Like a lot of a lot. Not uh, many going to NC Arsenal. Yeah, we actually have a reasonable strong force going straight for Lithcorp. I wonder if they're going to do any work on... Yeah, Tumus Cargo. That is the play in the south. Lots of uh, lots of TR going to no uh, Moss Ravine. 2448 of Northgrove. Probably doing a vehicle pull from North Northgrove Post. I'll go have a look now. Oh, no. Galaxies. Oh, dude, talk about interdiction plays. TR just dropped. Cobalt is actually putting a lot, a lot of people in Raven's Landing. They've actually got the point, and they've got to control. Now they can't flip it, but they're there to screw over the enemy. They really want the ascent. This really is a big place. Yeah. Take rock slide, and they can still go ascent anyway. Uh, rock slide is out of bounds, dude. Oh, you can't cap that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, the point. It was flipping. Not anymore. No, no. Okay, so. Cobalt playing hardball here. Uh, Miller grabbing some. Uh, they've got the vehicle terminal hacked. They've got the air. No, I will. I tell you what. It's a mixture of air right now. Another team really has tropical dominance. Uh, have a look at the crown. Uh, not the crown. God, I'm talking about the ascent. Would you see what kind of air bottle is going on there? Because I can see a lot of scythes overhead. All it takes is one hero infiltrator to get in on the point and make a difference on uh, Raven's Landing. Uh, importantly, the cap point is ticking down at Blithcorp. So the fact is, we're on a timer here because the ascent, when it actually starts flipping, is um, is sub seven minutes. So all the time that this force of Raven's Landing can interdict uh, will get them uh, the ascent for free potentially. The question is, what are they sacrificing for this? Uh, we see that it's roughly for even numbers at Barak Electrical, Tumas Cargo. There's a big Miller presence, so that the the population imbalance is because of Cargo and Raven's Landing. Uh, Miller tried, oh wow, at Lithcorp Central, I believe Miller also, and we'll come right back there, tried to interdict, uh, they got a lot of numbers. Wow, Miller's actually committing a lot of people and a lot of sunders to Lithcorp Central. That's not gonna do anything, guys, uh, because you're losing your base bomb behind. Yeah, I don't know why Miller are still there, that's just stupid. They need to leave and go back, I mean they've lost the, the you know, the momentum play. And Cobalt is still mega defending uh, a neutral capture point I might add. Plus, oh wow, the Cobalt Air Force is overhead at Raven's Landing, this is their big, big play. <laughs> There's a rocket swam in the infantry, dear lord. Oh, that Sunder's gonna go down, and the infantry's just getting pounded. Yeah, okay. So I, I have to say that probably Raven's Landing is gonna be kept in control of Cobalt. Cobalt's gonna get Lithcorp Central, and probably the Ascent for free. Now, what's Miller gonna do in return? Well, in the north, we see that big Miller force, no opposition, Araxcom Network Hub, although the numbers just come there, so we'll go in there next. Uh, Miller, Miller have a Sunder at Barak. Uh, check well, Moss Ravine. Yeah, There's a big push on Moss Ravine as well, so perhaps Cobalt playing the game where they'll allow... Ooh, okay. Check this out, Cobalt Air Force has turned up at Araxicum Network Hub, picking on any Sundra. I think uh, Cobalt might be able to steal Barrack Electrical. Miller have only got one Sundra in there, and Miller and Cobalt have just dropped a lot more troops. That's true, it's no longer large outposts, it could be any neutral base, so hypothetically speaking, Araxicum Network Hub... Um, Tumas cargo facility and a barrack electrical could all be stolen, but there's a big Miller force at Moss Ravine, 2448, and they're pushing through, and they're going to go straight to Sungri Power Hub as well. Now, I'm actually really seen to see what happens if this base goes through. It's probably nothing, but uh, I'm wondering if the UI changes at all. Huge, huge amount of uh, Miller on NC Arsenal as well. Not really doing anything, because it's a three-point base. Yeah, that's and the fact is, they don't even have all the capture points either. Uh, okay, so Moss Ravine in 15 seconds, still going through. Uh, oh, I tell you what, dude, uh, did I just totally miss this? It's Cobalt, missed. sorry, it's Cobalt, god, I'm confused with the TR. Uh, Cobalt is his TR, they're taking Moss Ravine, Miller needs to respond to that in some fashion. So, Moss Ravine goes through, and um, Lithcorp Central is about to go through. Raven's Landing has finally flipped, you can see the numbers there, 2448, so Miller's pushed that back. Took Tumas, blah, 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 can't say that, Tumas Cargo Facility, 30 seconds. Yeah, Miller's got that lockdown, Sinners inside everywhere, it's, uh, you won't want to push into the... Barrack could be interesting, because uh, Cobalt have committed a lot of numbers there. 
Uh, and now they've run away, so I guess Miller wins that one. And as I said earlier in the pregame, it's a Sunder garage. You can drive in, tons of Sunders, watching all the entrances, proxy rep. It's pretty much uh, a yeah. no go area. You know, I just, I just thought, but I don't think Cobalt's play on Raven Landing is that much of a problem if Miller plays it outright, because it's still going to take them seven minutes to take Raven's Landing. And I, uh, not Raven's Landing, uh, Ascent. And you, ideally, you want to steal it anyway, so. Well, the, no. Take Raven to then go to Ascent. Right, steal right. It six but minutes. the point is that the, the, the Raven's Landing is still three minutes, and the Ascent is going for free, so if. Uh, when yeah, we see two mistake plants already going. They can just drop in all the points and steal yes, them. but they can only do it in three minutes. So if I was Cobalt, re-attack Raven's Landing because you now have a link from Lithcorp Central and prevent them from ever ha- capturing Raven's Landing. Well, well, all Mill has to do is, is put a flip on Lithcorp as well. Well they, well, they can't put a flip on Lithcorp. They have and no connection as, to as Lithcorp. As, as long as the ascent is contested, you can still always flip it, can't you? Even if you lose no, 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 no. The thing is, uh, right now, Miller cannot contest the ascent. So if you're they Cobalt... Can, they can. As, as soon as they capture it, they can... Because as long as the ascent's still in the contestion, you can always flip a point. So even if even if Cobalt flipped Raven's Landing, uh, they can still I, attack. I, I, I'm, I'm going to have to get the observer camera here to disagree, to fly over there, to jump. In fact, it's like, as, as a Vanu player, because you do not have a link to the ascent, are you telling me that they can flip a point in their favor? I don't think they yeah, can. Yeah, because we'll, we'll, they capture the base. The base is still under, it's still under contestion, I believe. Nah, I don't, I'm going to argue this on stream. Maybe, right maybe haven't played Planet Side long enough. No, you haven't played Planet Side. They need Raven's Landing, and I'm right by this. And in two minutes, Cobalt could go back to Raven's Landing, screw it over, and keep the ascent for themselves. Well, anyway. That just means Miller needs to put a, a single guy on Lithcorp and flip that. You don't have a no. link. When they get Ravens, I mean. The, yeah, oh my god, this whole bloody conversation <laughs> is about them getting Ravens Landing, and if you're Cobalt, preventing them from getting Ravens Landing. Yes, of course, if they get Ravens Landing, then they can do play. Alright, anyway. What's the end- thing? It's super power hope. It's a bit manic there. Yeah, we're gonna go over there. Dear Lord, it's like we're a married couple. <laughs> no, darling, yeah. you're wrong. Shut up. <laughs> okay, here we are at Sungry Power Hub. And uh, large Cobalt Force still in the north. However, they are contested even numbers, but it looks like the Miller Force is pretty much pinned in on the spawn room. Last thing you want to do, guys, is stay from the spawn room and fight from the spawn room. Yeah, uh, just pull pr- some vehicles from somewhere and drive them over. Or warp gate pool, air force. I mean, there's a lot of. Um, I'm just looking at what kind of vehicle setup we here. We know. It, uh... well, not oh, that hello, many Mr. Hasser. The They're all outside. So if you drop, if you drop on the point, you can turn the tables basically. Well, we do have a um, Sauron Harasser uh, being a nuisance on their galaxy. Proxy Pass. Uh, we can also see that the spawn sunders for uh, TR, uh, uh, being Cobalt, slowly being picked off. Um, doesn't look like Miller's making any realistic <laughs> push, though. <laughs> Cobalt just stole Raven's landing. Look at the drop, 1496. Oh, my God. Oh! Third party. Yes, third faction. There you go. Told you. I was right. See? Look at this. They're going to get a sent for free, and they're going to get Raven's landing. That's a beautiful play by Cobalt. The, this Miller force that's turning again out of Sungry Power Hub um, doesn't. I mean, they're stuck in a the corner. There's even a medic on top. Well, okay, you could have thrown C4, but yeah, there you go. Cobalt definitely in control right now. Um, but about of course, so but there's roughly even territories at the moment because Miller's got Barrack Electrical and they've got Tumas Cargo Facility. They did threaten the tech plant with Repulsed, and currently Miller is threatening Aramex uh, Chemical Co. NC Arsenal is the mech major base potentially to come and play yeah, because they of the that. They, they can't oh, let that get dropped. Miller reinforcements are here. They're right up to the base. They've got reinforcements for the galaxy. QRF is in. They're inside the main building. Six seconds to go. Five seconds. Can Cobalt take Sungry Power Hub? Miller is on the cap point, it's not enough, one second to go, Cobalt takes the base. That's just a horrible disaster. And what kind of numbers, man, Miller dropped uh, twice the numbers. So we also see NC Arsenal is 2 minutes and 20 seconds. Um, We still see Bastion slightly taken down, the Ascent is going to be captured for free in 3 minutes. And it also threatens uh, Arax's Firearms Corp, meaning that unless you push back, you always have the potential of being hit from behind. Uh, We're going to go down to Aramex Chemical now, in the south. Here we go, we're down at Aramex Chemical Co. And right, we've got the capture point. It is a uh, Cobalt base. Miller's trying to take it. Uh, in terms of spawn sunders, perhaps you can tell me what's going on here because obviously they're enemy faction from my observer account. Uh, a couple of beacons. It's an external exposed point so anyone can drop it and fly. 
Looks like the Cobalt forces are trying to fight Duke somewhere from the Cobalt north. Cobalt Galaxy's coming in, dropping on A point and NCR still now. Looks like they're going to try for a steal. Huge melee uh, Cobalt Air Force over NCR still at the moment. We'll go there Does next. Is Do you think, uh, well it's still even numbers roughly with yeah, 60 seconds to go, that will be the next part of the opening play. We see Mill is also beginning to fight back at Sungri Power Hub and Tumis has been attacked by Cobalt. Not really any real resistance down here at the south, I mean it's even numbers but I'm not seeing like, oh here we go, squad coming in. Alright, Cobalt squad is running, here we go, they're going for the point, let's follow these guys. That'd be a harasser. Vehicle manslaughter! Tarmac's chemical about to get us through. Yep, watching that 22 seconds. 1496 from both sides of NT Arsenal. I'm just watching it never... to see who gets it. 2 Thing minutes is... 38, TR got 1 point. Cobalt, uh, there are air forces here, but I don't think it's enough to stop this in the next few seconds. I mean, maybe if the, yeah, okay, pilot did drop out the ESF. Three seconds on the point. Is he gonna get it? No, Miller takes another base, right. I think Miller are gonna get NT Arsenal for sure. Oh my god, I'm, I'm still in the Miller command group, so I'm getting <laughs> command group messages. So that's, that's, that's your fault. Um, <laughs> I left that stuff ages ago. Okay, so we're currently watching over NT Arsenal right now. Uh, right, here we go. So, three capture points, all in the hands of Miller. Co uh, Cobalt has some external forces, perhaps, uh, on the is outside the, the air forces here. Charlie is flipping. Okay, Cobalt forces are in. They're on Charlie. This will stall it to about a minute, yes. But Miller, presumably, is going to reinforce from their forces in the north. Yeah, I think Sungry Power Hub is entirely empty. Is that everyone from Sungry Power Hub abandoned the base? <laughs> zero, zero versus zero at Sungry Power Hub. This is zero versus zero at Sungry Power Hub, really? Wow. <laughs> I, if, well, okay, fair enough. There's one TR on the on A point, and he's just killing everyone. <laughs> no, one, no one's noticed him. Oh, he died now. Oh, Just to see fresh Miller C4. forces, yeah, pushing on Charlie. I think Miller's going to get this. I'm just oh, sure six nice, seconds. Nice back attack on Charlie. Yeah. Yeah, Miller got this. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Miller has taken NC Arsenal. Uh, Power Hub is being saved, although I think the numbers are kind of going back there, by Cobalt. Cargo is being uh, lost, Falcon. Uh, that's true, Cargo, right. Cargo's the next base, potentially. i tell but you what. In the south lane, they're going ham. This is a really close game, by the way, because of the... Uh, by the way, the game clock and the bug in the top left, it's set for a two-hour game, where this is 2.45 minute half, so our, our referee will keep us up to date here. And, uh, Everyone's got to run back to Sungri Park up and refill it now. And I tell you what, the... Uh, oh my goodness, I'm going to turn that off because it's not actually updating with points. It's just deceptive. Here, hold on. Yeah, the, the team's drawing right now. It's just a crazy match. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, I'll give you updates on the map right now. It's 45-48. Uh, it's pretty close. Tumas Cargo Facility. Um, we have... Um, no Sunder Garage, uh, however. Oh, it looks like Miller Forces are just making it onto the point now. They're picking their final push. 50 seconds to go. Doesn't look like there was any reinforcements for Cobalt. Yep. Alright, so Miller's made a save. They got the flip point. Uh, they now need to stay here and defend for three minutes so Cobalt can choose to come back with larger forces. Um, or they can, um, you know, use this time to send their population elsewhere. It looks like they're choosing to stay here, at least with some straggling still numbers a, going back to the point. There's a huge amount of Cobalt on NC Arsenal. It's Uh, okay, so we also see that uh, Cobalt's making a save on Bastion, Sungry Power Hub is fluctuating, uh, there's nothing like at the moment going anywhere right this moment. Tormar Storage Yard is a uh, fight's moving on down there in the south. Yeah, Tormar. Miller's getting some ground in the south and Bill and Cobalt are getting some ground in the north, it's a bit of mirror image. Oh! Reinforcements for Cobalt are turning up at Tumas Cargo Facility. They've got the roof control, yeah. and they also Big have Max Crash, uh, no, NC Arsenal as well for some reason. Really? AV yeah, and AA? Pulled, pulled a huge amount of Max in the spawn rooms. I don't know why, I don't know what the logic behind is. There's, there's a lot of Miller's uh, Cobalt Sunders around, so... Well, if you want to watch that, go to PSB2 then. Uh, right now we're continuing to watch the Tumas Cargo Facility. A lot of guys in the roof. The Cobalt Air Force is here. Um, 
Base timer's down to two minutes. All they have to do is push in. Miller doesn't have any kind of extra defenses in terms of Sunders. Cobalt's pushed himself up to the capture point. This is going to be about a 2 minute and 15 second base cap. There we go, 2 minutes and 10 to be exact. A lot of numbers here in Tuma's uh, card facility. And this actually works really well for Cobalt because of oh, the score is currently 46-48, uh, short on the territory control. Uh, if Tumas cargo facility uh, is captured, it means uh, Cobalt pushes their lead ever so much, and it means they can focus all their numbers on Araxis Farms Court, but they need to do something about their south, Tormar Storage Yard flipping away. Uh, applying pressure on Sungri Amp Station is also that another good one. <laughs> really? If that goes Whoa! Minutes, okay, well, well, alright, we'll go a quick uh, flip down to the south. I want to see Tormar. I'm at Tormar right now. Um, it's a nice point hole by VS. Deploy with TR Sundra. Well. Oh, Comet Maxis, strangely enough. Yeah, to be honest, the, the, the no anti infantry max rule was just I'm gonna AV your ass off. I of course, proximity. AV Maxis are pretty good against infantry if you use them right. They're just not as effective as anti infantry Maxis. <laughs> the stream was like, can we have a web camera of, uh, over the, the where the overlay was? Because it's a friendly of you instead. <laughs> no! Top of stream one. Might be the way to increase the viewership. <laughs> yeah, no man. I haven't um, been working this winter, it's just like Christmas, so. Well anyway, the Miller force is currently on is is getting absolutely squeezed at the Tormar storage yard. They they deployed a huge amount of air here. <laughs> yeah, they've got air and vehicle set up. Right, okay. While that's going on, why don't you uh, I think Bastion's actually being saved. Yeah, big redeployment there by TR. AV Max is still going to town. <laughs> oh, he shot his own medic! Okay, well there you go. Capture point reclaimed by Cobalt. Okay, that's not going anywhere right now. Uh, the Bastion's being saved. Looks like Miller's counter pushing on Raven's Landing, but they have lost cargo facility. Uh, we'll wait to the map to update here in a second. We'll head on over to Raven's Landing and see how Miller's push is going back into there's the center. There's a lot of uh, TR air over Ravens. No, that's the thing. Uh, if I was Miller, I'd just get back on Bastion, to be honest. And this is the thing. Oh, well, Cobalt's uh, uh, Galaxy Group. I wonder if Cobalt's air is just um, stalling the uh, you know any kind of terms of movement by Miller here. No, because it looks like it's Cobalt's Air Force is dominant and their ability to the galaxy and fly and redeploy. Would you be so kind as to drop down to the top fun, please? Ask just to see how long we have left in this first half, please. Uh, sure. I will put a clock on for the second half, guys, so it'll be a slightly better understanding of how long we've got in the halves. Cool. Oh, we also noticed that nobody wanted to play NC. There's, there'll be no NC Maxes, obviously, today, um, by popular request. Uh, NC Arsenal is slowly taking down. Oh, well, here we go. Cobalt pushing on a Sungri uh, amp station, three pointer base. Uh, it's relatively easy to capture. Uh, pushing up to the warp gate. Uh, three, two capture points in favor of Cobalt. You're going to have a lead a lot more numbers here, but I guess they could shift around from. Oh, slow down camera. There you go. Ah, uh, it's kind of ballsy. What was the response? 25 minutes, he said. 25 minutes. Ago, so probably 24 now. Awesome, right. Well, like I said, uh, I'll, I'll do an actual accurate in-game clock um, when he does the countdown for the second half, guys. Uh, looks like uh, Miller's actually making a save here. They've got probably even numbers. It's really just kind of an harassment attack at the moment. The problem is, is that all the caps are ticking in Cobalt's favor right now, which is never a good thing to see on the map. Oh, aside from the Bastion, but that's, yeah, that's that's kind of back in the way. Oh, we can still see that NC Arsenal. All right, let's check the populations out here. 
the imbalance between NC Arsenal and Sungry Amp Station is because is is where the populations are. Uh, overpop for uh, Cobalt attacking NC Arsenal. Overpop for Miller defending Sungry Amp Station. Bastion's a slight overpop for Cobalt. Uh, Raven's Landing has been pushed back. Big fight going in Arax's Farms Court. We'll go check that out. And Aramax has been saved potentially with a push back on Toromar. Yeah, as we said, it's not a complete ban of Maxes. It is purely a anti um, infantry max ban. That's all. And that's more of a gentleman's agreement thing. We don't really have any say in that. Uh, Okay, so we got Cobalt on uh, all three capture points. Miller has got themselves a Sunderer train out on the road, perhaps to breach off any of the... Dude, they've got Sunderers. They even have deployed Sunderer and Alpha, which despawned, <laughs> despawned just now. And the capture point at A has nobody defending it and nobody on it. Okay, here we go. Hero Engineer is like, I will capture this point. Thank you very much. And get your gun out, bro. There we go. Okay, Spitfire turret. Yeah, that works. Right, okay, Alpha is recaptured. That, that's just stress-inducing sometimes when that happens. And I tell you what, if you're um, Cobalt, this plays perfectly into your hand here because you are 49 to 45 up, okay? So you've got a couple of a base of advantage. Be the population sink, suck in Miller, force him to come to Arax's Firearms Corp to defend, right? And that way, you're fighting on enemy territory and they can't afford to fight elsewhere or capture other bases. Just be a nuisance for the next 18 minutes. I mean, you know, the base, you know, the game's got longer uh, than 20 minutes to go, so you can definitely pull this off with two capture points. Oh, Miller's making the push now on Bravo. How many TR inside? On Bravo itself? One uh, medic small. Heavy. It's oh, a small no, four, number. Four guys. They got a galaxy overhead though. I guess they could theoretically reinforce their squad. Max altitude galaxy for reinforcements, yeah. Looks like they're about to be wiped off. Nope. Infiltrator still being a hero. Reinforcements, fresh uh, half squad from uh, uh, Cobalt. Uh, securing the Bravo capture point, but the Charlie capture point looks like it's been under pressure and is, yeah, all the tears have been wiped out and it looks like Miller's made a save on the Charlie capture point, so it's gonna go back. Yeah, and the thing is they're, they're committing 55% now, so it looks like it's roughly balanced numbers across the map, but uh, control or tempo, uh, however you want to call it, is in the favor of Cobalt here because they're fighting on Miller's bases and Miller hasn't got the influence to push out and re-attack Cobalt bases. That's what they need to do. They need to re save their bases and then push back out. Well, that's why all the time was a ticking in Cobalt's favor, which is just, well, it's ideal for Cobalt and horrifying for Miller because you never be able to attack out, especially in such a short game. Having yeah. all the time is ticking down so far on your own territory. And the problem is, they've been pushed back to large outposts. So Firearms Corp, NC Arsenal, Sungry Amp Station, these are all multi-point bases. So long as you hold one multi-point base, you can't push out to the Augur or to Sungry Power Hub or to Raven's Landing or to Miss Cargo Facility. Um, looks like there is a push going in south into Tormar Storage Yard because it's probably one of the few places that they can push. Go check that out. Uh, Ghost Cappy? Ghost Cappy, yes. One on one, Yomi. With a deployed TR Sundra on the capture point just to add extra flavor. Here we go. EMP and oh SMG you down bro get on my level Oh, but you can't deploy a galaxy here. No, no, no the one infiltrator just got a galaxy reinforcement against them Here comes more cobalt Oh, he went down to a claymore That's the end of you And that was the capture point. So it really was just a one-man harassment on the uh, Tormor storage capture point TR attacking the come network now. They have a harasser up and everything now that uh, Bastion's been saved fully. Yeah, so the fact is, is could Miller do a counterplay on Tumas Cargo or Raven's Landing? It looks like uh, Tumas Cargo is actually ticking down. Um, you're right about Sungry Amp is now going back in favour of Cobalt. NC Arsenal is still being a nuisance. And you see a big Cobalt play for Arax's network hub as well. Yeah, we'll go check that out. Big Cobalt play for Arax Chemical, but I think they've been back hacked. Uh, they will be in about 14 seconds, yeah. 
and the previous base is saved. Okay, so we're currently at um, our Axicom network hub, checking this out. Uh, <laughs> Cobalt's got themselves set up. The fact is, um, Galaxy, Twin Galaxy, annoying little uh, harasser. Oh, well, that's not a Fury, it's a Vulcan. No... Oh, Valkyrie, hello. No real Miller forces here at the moment. Three minutes to go. Oh, hello, squad of Miller. Them at Aramex. <laughs> it's an amazing play by whoever's down here. That harasser's gonna die. Oh, wait, is he gonna escape? No, it's on fire. It's burning. It's going. And it's gone. So, so on Aramex, Cobalt have dropped 2448. <laughs> <attacked> <laughs> by that, is that Hero Infiltrator? Go to see if it's the Hero Infiltrator on Tormar. While we're currently watching our Axcom Network Hub, uh, squad play here by Miller. Looks like it's Cons pushing up to the capture point double doors. It looks like we got a. <laughs> is that the Valkyrie with a close air support weapon? We also have the high ground on top of the capture building held by uh, Cobalt firing down. Well, as Obi Wan says, if Cobalt have the high ground, then they can't lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, this D20 roll. Oh, but the Miller forces are all bottled in by the- oh, and their EMPs, it's just not going well. They need to make a concerted push, just say go and then go. Miller seems outnumbered everywhere, it's kind of it's kind of strange. Obviously just not using the population as well as a couple. Amish pop is bang on, in fact Miller's got 1% more, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's... but they, they just seem outnumbered everywhere, they just not Oh man, efficient. dude, Sungri amp station is getting really pounded. See, reinforcers are going there 60 seconds ago, I think we're going to have to go there now. Nine seconds to go. What's the numbers here? It's two to one advantage for Cobalt. Cobalt reinforcing their capture attack on Araxicom Network. That's the right thing you do. You start it slow and then you reinforce additionally. We also see that there are numbers on Sungri. So where are they low? They're, they're, they're low numbers on NC Arsenal. Uh, roughly even. Oh, and they don't really have population in the middle. Right. Um, well, we need to go check Sungri because that's quite a large base to lose. Well, it's it's it's, the, it's a three point arm station, right? They're just horrendous. As soon as the enemy gets in one, that that's it. Like you've lost it. Got them on unless you've got steamroll momentum everywhere else, you're just gonna lose the base because they can they have a spawn point within hey, the dude, base. Hey, dude, I'd go for the warp gate. Uh, I don't know if there's enough time for that, but I would go for the warp uh, gate. If there's, no, there's no idea enough time for the warp gate. I'm fairly certain Sungrid can get lost just because you need massive overpop to defend these bases. Yeah, and the problem is once they get there, you should have now let them get the power hub. And the moment they can, the moment you are popping, they can just redeploy anyone in anyway because you have permanent spawns there, thanks to the spawn rules. It's oh, sad, is Miller gonna get bases. Charlie here and stop the base? I think we're gonna lose our XCOM as well. Okay, so Miller gets the, they stop the capture point at the absolute last minute. I mean, or last 15 seconds, but it's no means guaranteed because an extra population redeploy, they're going to pay for it because they're paying for it with cap time or NC Arsenal. So it's its kind of like a, a hollow victory. The constant pressure applied by, um, you know, by Cobalt is going to get one of these two bases purely uh, over time. Uh, Araxcom Network Hub was captured by Cobalt. Looks like Raven's Landing is being saved. Ah, Miller's going to take Tumas Cargo Facility, however, and the Tormar Cap is being saved by Cobalt. I think they're going to take Raven's Landing as well. Five seconds. There we go. Yep, okay, so Sundra train inside the capture point at Tumas Cargo oh, Facility. Nice. Thing is, I guess for Miller here, the key is not to lose by too much. It's still a close thing, and you still have a second yeah, half to it's come. Yeah, second round. Yeah, you so get as much points as possible. You can feel, get a feel for what the enemy does, how they play it. So this is a very important base capture. Would you be so kind as to ask uh, our ET on the clock uh, how long we got in the game, and I'll put a game clock up for the, you know, like I said, the second round. I want to see how much is left. I don't, um, I don't want to move out because I, I got locked out last time. Uh, I'll drag you back in, in a minute, okay? I'll trust you. Yeah. You shouldn't trust me. I'm not going to drag him back in. Uh, okay, so Tumas Cargo Facility done. All right, let's go grab him back in two seconds. What else have we got? Raxcom, Network Hub's flipping back. NC Arsenal. I guess Miller just needs to play to the halftime here and make sure they don't. What have we got? How long have we got? 15 minutes. It's about to be 15 minutes. Uh, 15 minutes. Oh, wow, okay. Car. So the, when it is. Right, so the fact is, is that there's still plenty of time to play. I mean, Miller can't play the defensive here just yet. Um, you know... What I'm trying to say there is... There are you... 15 minutes remaining in a match there you now. Go. 15 minutes. 
Cool, right. Um, I guess we will go watch the Miller Counterattack or Axcom Network, perhaps? Um, I'm the maid the saving two minutes. The thing is, going for two minutes tech plant takes too long. 15 minutes left. It's really not going to go anywhere. Uh, maybe apply more pressure at Raven's Landing or Toromar. Hold what you've got in the south. Perhaps send the forces you've got to Araxcom Network Hub. Reinforce that. But you see how the populations at Sungri are skyrocketing 48 plus. I mean, it looks like it's so close. That's uh, the problem with the Cobalt's going to try and. You can keep bringing people in from the rest of the map, so it's always just going to escalate and escalate and escalate. You can't yeah, let yeah, the fight yeah. get inside those amp stations. You've just lost them. Yeah, we see a fresh attempt by Cobalt. They've got themselves A, they've got themselves a couple of Sunders. Um... Well, it's, it's just going to escalate because Miller can't afford to lose it because they'll get an uh, NTS lock off and Cobalt want to take it and they can keep putting troops in there, so it'll, it'll just keep escalating. And, uh, and Cobalt will probably win it because the, you just have the attack has an advantage in those bases. Because they they can just leave and then come back whenever they want. Yeah, and we can see that the Sungri amp station was about to be saved, but actually, air force is overhead. We've got uh, wow, this is a, this must be an issue of the domination. Wow, dude, check this out. The Cobalt Air Force is taunting the Miller Air Force. They're dominating them in their warp gate. They're actually, they're dominating, they're controlling Sungri Amp Station. The Sungri Amp Station is actually ticking in favour of Cobalt right now. And the NC Arsenal is still slowly ticking in their favour, even though Miller has slight pop advantage at Sungri Amp. But there's a huge chunk of population of just Air Force looking at Miller inside their warp gate, just, you know, keeping them pinned in. Maybe they've, they've committed a lot more people to the air or they're keeping it in there and, and it's making a difference. But you'd have thought if that's the issue, Miller would have more people on the ground able to make a, you know, a difference elsewhere. Well, our access uh, network, our access network hope, it looks like Miller might be able to capture this at least. Decent point hole, no maxes though from uh, VS. And they're using recon darts from the crossbow. What's oh interesting God. is that this long range uh, air duel standing off putting out the warp gate, there's no, um. I should put this, there's no like proxy rep galaxies assisting them, which is which is unusual because that seems to be the more recent uh, kind of meta in the service match. Okay, so the Cobalt Air Force turned up to Rascom Network Hub, and now they're just bombarding all their close yeah, air support the weaponry the into the cap room, yeah. Okay, just so. Just wait, get Desi out and just shoot them for doing that. <laughs> the minute, the minute he's just chilling. I don't care. See, the, well, the VS are staying smartly uh, by the staircase up a balcony, and they're not in the cap room. They don't need to be in the cap room. Well, yeah, the moment the TR attacks, the, moment the mosquitoes can't bomb uh, anymore, but so. This number inflation by Cobalt is actually their air force. So okay, Galax is here, and now they're dropping, but with 11 seconds to go, Cobalt should get this. Uh, they, you know, Sorry, Miller, Miller should get Miller. this. Cobalt has allowed them to get this. <laughs> yeah, Cobalt has allowed them to get this, is what I meant to say, obviously. But they are right on the capture point. A few more bodies in the point, maybe? Nope, right, Miller gets it. You have failed the Republic. The facility is lost. Okay, so what does that do for our... Well, the score will update in a second. Doesn't matter, because they're going to lose Sungri anyway. Oh, really? Alright, we're going to have to go and back to Sungri and watch that. thing is, even if they don't lose Sungri, look at this. They're going to lose NC Arsenal, because it's still ticking down. Maximum pressure by Cobalt on these two large outposts in the north. And thing is... It... NC Arsenal was a neutral base that Miller got and is now going to lose. They have finally resecured Axis Farms Corp. They are beginning to attack Raven's Landing and they were attacking a Toromar, so I guess we'll do a flyover on NC Arsenal while we go to Sungri Power Hub. Okay, all three capture points held by um, Cobalt and they're just dominating the spawn room. As we move over to the um, amp station, um, it looks like it's just a tussle going on between the capture points, going back and forth, a slow grind, but the fact is, as long as there's a distraction right now going on at Sungri Amp Station with all this population sink, uh, slowly, you know, Cobalt is stealing uh, NC Arsenal from under the rug of Miller. There's, there's just no defenders there. I think they just have to defend NC Arsenal. <laughs> Now, but now uh, Sungri is getting huge pop shops in it as well. That's the problem with dump stations, like they can just put Sundries everywhere and they can spawn directly in. It's yeah, just but as... it's, it's more than that. There's complete air control here by um, 
Cobalt. Cobalt has complete air control over... I mean, you just zoom in on the minimap and you just see it as full of red mosquitoes and Valkyries and the occasional galaxies flying around. Because of the open nature and the, the flow of movement to get from cat point to cat point, it's just really, really, really hard on the defenders to, to, to move around. I think Miller just needs to delay into the arsenal a bit, then go for the cup. Thing they is, need that to delay, the, delay, they just sacrifice some great, right? go delay into the arsenal. That's to dangerous to because of the sun right overwatch. Just go straight for Lithcop. Just go straight for Lithcop and cut off after the ascent. Hey, Frosty, this fight is all but one. I think that's uh, the best move, mate. Yeah, it's it's. Thing oh, is, sorry, it's, 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 NCS still won't get cut off because it has it has a link from network network up now. It actually so, network uh, up, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they need to just abandon some. What they need to do is they need to abandon some grey because they never they just give it up. It's just a huge problem for them. Go NC Arsenal and then push Lithcorp with everything. That's what I would do if I was FC. You would push what Icon and Biolab? No, I'd defend NC Arsenal and push Lithcorp Central. Go oh Ravens, right, go right, right. Central, cut off a cent. Ravens cut off a cent. It's a worth trade. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sungray is just a horrible base. Re-attack re it. Like let them take it and then let them try and defend it. It's just it's not even it's not it's just a psychological thing. When you're defending the base, Cobalt thinks go great. We're attacking it, so they do they make good decisions. Thing so is, you do is you look thing is you you're you're opening up two kind of uh, smaller bases that can but still it be captured. Doesn't matter. Sungray, you can keep on the like, Just look at how Mil Miller's doing, getting attacked by Cobalt now. You can keep it under constant pressure. And just the mentality is, if it's your base, you feel you have to defend it. If you're an attacker, you can you just, just allow Cobalt to take it, because then their mentality will switch. They will assume they're the defender, even though they're doing exactly the same thing that Miller's doing now. They'll, they'll put more effort into defending it, and you can punish them on the rest of the map. Go with Cobalt, get an ascent, that's, that's the way to play. It's, well, Charlie... it's 46 48, right? It's 46 48, that's all they have to do, but it's so close. If they get three bases for some grade, they'll win. Like, if, if I was Miller, I would do that. But I don't think they are going to do it, but that's what I would do. It's still 46-48, yeah, it's still 46-48, you're right, so question, uh, and the NC Arsenal is being saved, Sungri Amp Station is being saved again, the extra population for Miller turning up, and they've now got the two of the three capture points. The Air Force uh, has left for Cobalt, uh, is that because of anti-air, because they've been called to go elsewhere? Uh, Raven's Landing is being saved now. I don't know why, but Miller is going for the tech plant, yet at the same time they're losing Aramax Chemical Co. to the south under being uh, out-popped. Uh, they, they really need to go Raven's Landing on the court. Uh, yeah, so great, it's, it's going to take so long to re-secure it. And then, unless they get power hope, it's just going to be constantly a uh, thorn in the slide. So, uh, I, I would have saved Aramax and, and NC Arsenal and just gone Raven's Landing and guaranteed that base, personally. Um, Oh my so goodness, the amp station, all three capture points, and <laughs> Miller's reverted to using the flak turrets. There are seven minutes left in the third part. Now, seven minutes. I think what's going to happen now is when Aramex goes through and uh, other bases get captured by Cobalt, they're just going to dump everything on Sun Grey and they're going to capture it. Cause it's going to be very fast cap. Right, they should have just le left, left some grey, lost it, and just um, dealt with Well, it. they're sticking to their guns, they're keeping it. It's 46-48. Yeah. The problem is, what's going to happen in the south here? Because every base is worth, uh, you know, the same kind of territory point. So, I mean, by, by holding Sungri but losing the south Aramax, it's, it's the same net effect. You're losing territory. It's, still, it's, it's also about men as well. Like. Oh, points flipping, what? Is Miller perhaps doing something Aramax? Oh, but they're getting absolutely pounded by the skies again. And close here support Valkyries, of all things, are just rubbing salt into the wound. Miller's outside on the exposed capture point, and they're all getting picked off. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty desperate clutch play here by Miller. I mean, they're, they're barely holding onto the capture point by some miracle, even though That's both October, are being Bansheeds, Valkyries, and shot from the high ground in all places. Is that it? Is that the point finally going to flip back in uh... I mean it's buying them time, the fact is... Uh, the tech... Oh they wow, get back on, uh, check the no, Cobalt get back response... On check the Cobalt response back on uh, the tech plant. Huge numbers uh, making a save there. Which means yeah, they've also got numbers plant. in the south, so what's going on? Where's the population imbalance? What's going on? Is that the Air Force that's gone there? 
It must uh, be. Look at them. There's a massive imbalance of population at Sungry Am Station. Miller has a huge amount of population. Now, I suppose they can use the Tumas Tech plant and the loss of Armex to make a fresh push at Sungry Power Hub. Push the Power Hub, push Moss Ravine, push North Grove. But again, they'll still need to save NC Arsenal with three minutes to go. You can save NC Arsenal anytime. I'd say push the Power Hub, save Armex, and take Ravens. Like, it's 46 48, you need two bases to win. So don't lose one and take two. Raven's landing your best bet, but they've lost it now. Well... 23 seconds on this base. Miller, what are you going to do? And Cobalt, can you hold on to it? I mean, they got Galaxy overhead. Yeah, way overhead. And they got Beacon support. Don't have any Sundras. Miller's got this fantastic Sundra dual furries watching the capture point, but it's not actually doing anything about the capture L building itself. So they're all being fired from above. Miller's getting in behind the kind of little antenna here, and they're getting the point on the 13 oh second marker. They might actually make a save here. In terms of population numbers, they've got the point. Um, Four minutes remaining now. Four minutes. NC Arsenal's now one minute though. <laughs> Everything's probably going to see Arsenal right now. From Cobalt, at least. There you go, got a countdown clock. Hooray! So I, yeah, VS gonna get Ravens, but will they lose NC Arsenal? I don't think that's worth it if they lose NC Arsenal. Um, Ravens is going back as a defensive save, so that's not going to go anywhere, and they won't be able to cap it now because there's not enough They're time in the clock. They, they have overpop there from VS. But it doesn't matter, it's being a save. That's just silly. So we're, we're down to 3 minutes and 14 seconds ish. Yeah, VS have lost NC Arsenal. There's no way they're saving it. Okay, so they've made a save at RMX. It could still theoretically be captured if it flips back immediately, but that's a save right now. Sun Group Power Hub is actually ticking down, and that can, I believe, be captured just. But, as you said, NC Arsenal gets captured in the last minutes of the game. It's going to push it up to around 49 to 45. Um, Raven's Landing, I don't know if that's going to be captured in time. I don't think it is. I don't think there's enough time for Raven's Landing. I think the only base, realistically, that's under contention is Sun Group Power Hub. <laughs> NC Arsenal got saved on 0 0 0 0 by, by Miller. No, it didn't. Uh, Look, it's, zero, it's zero, red. 0 0 0 Exactly. Oh my god. But, uh, really? Oh, did they try and get yeah. it? Because it's red right now. Cobalt oh, took it. it. it was, oh, oh, they took it. They took it. Oh, yeah, okay. they took it. Yeah, they took it. Oh, that's me being, that's me being silly. It was at 0 0 0 0 there. I thought they saved it, but nope. Okay, well, if Aramax yeah, flips in bad. the next 10 seconds and totally held, maybe Cobalt can get it. I don't think they can. Um, I'm going to have a look at the Ravens landing cap. Uh, I don't think that'll count. Uh, so we'll get the official ruling from a referee in a bit here because he'll do the countdown and then that basically will dictate whether or not the space is captured. Wow, huge thunder, lightning and air force by Cobalt here just pounding in the issue at Ravens landing. That's not really the base that matters. Right now, if I'm Miller, yeah, look at it. They know what's the only base that matters. Sungry Power Hub is the only base that realistically matters. Um across the whole map, other than perhaps Aramax for a few more seconds. Yeah, so we're going to go up north here. This base doesn't actually matter, it's not going to go in time. Um, usual suspects of the Cobalt Air Force overhead. Uh, oh, Valkyrie drop on the capture point in the rear. The thing is, Miller's got a lot of people here. I mean, this, this is it's kind of like the condensing of like the entire server population. What have we got? About a minute roughly to go. Armex is going to be saved. Tumas Tech Plant is going to be saved. Raven's Landing. Look at that. 96 minute, plus. Yeah. I think um, maybe this is intentional or not, but they've been duped. Sungry West doesn't matter. Uh, Araxicum doesn't matter. Bastion doesn't matter. And the massive overpop at Raven's Landing, they've defended a base that does not matter. So knowing the exact clock timers is really important. And it looks like Miller might be able to gimmick out themselves a base capture here at Sungry Power Hub. That will bring it, because it's, it's crucial, because right now it's 45 yeah, to 48. It's 49, two yeah. Rounds. It's going to bring it around to around a two uh, base change when we go into the second half. So it's, it's still extremely close going into the second half. Oh, okay, so 
my countdown clock and what's on the map. Actually, you know what? Miller might not have enough time to capture this. Um, yeah, they don't. Oh man, oh, right. Yeah, I, even I was slightly wrong here. Five, four, three, two, one. End of the first Doesn't half. Doesn't count. Oh, okay, end so. Of the first half ends with 49% to Cobalt and 45% to Miller. I'm requesting all players to leave the continent, leave Emirates so I can flip the map in the other way. I will do an all call to get you back on the continent again. So once again, all players leave the continent of Emirates. Time to bug out, the facility is lost. Right, well, I think we need to decompress there slightly. <laughs> We've got the countdown clock, got the second half, right, let's decompobulate. While we now take a 15 minute guys break, so as we said, there is a 49 to 45 uh, lead here, an advantage for Cobalt. So you're talking a couple of bases, and uh, now we're going to swap warp gates um, and restart. So you're Miller, okay, what do you do to overcome the, the imbalance? It's Cobalt has an overwhelming air force, right? And they're using it to good effect. However, you're still an able to... reminder, there is a second half. Starting in about 15 minutes, you're on the same faction. All you need to do is leave the continent. Nothing else. Just leave the continent and you can stay logged in. Thank you. So as we were saying, um, by looking at the map as, as we've got it right now, we're going to get the map reset up. Miller's going to now be attacking from the western warp gate and Cobalt's from the eastern warp gate. What do you do if you're Miller? I'm like, cause... Well, I have Daddy and Lazy on speed dial, but I think there's a conflict in Syria they're evolving right now. So uh, I don't know what Miller does. Uh, uh yeah. Probably, I'd say, because they're reversing the map, they need to do what Cobalt did and push Sungry. Well, we we did see the, the the neutral territories in the center as it goes through. That was some smart play in the beginning plan, allowing you know uh, captures at the last moment, that type of stuff. That was really impressive from both teams how they did it, and it seemed to be that Cobalt had a good play for the ascent. They definitely went for the interdiction play, and they definitely grabbed the ascent. And then Miller did a more of a kind of a pressure around the NC Arsenal in the south. Yet Cobalt played the the north north lane very well into the amp station, the Sungary amp station, and took it. So I mean. I guess we'll see the same kind of composition, same forces in the same areas, but it's, it's that Air Force. I mean, Cobalt, I guess, is going to rely on the Air Force to give them that edge to keep going because they've already got a lead. Miller's the one that has to come out attacking here and grab three or four base advantage. Amorish has fallen to the new conglomerate. Right, so I'd say we're roughly... I'll tell you what, I'll give us a countdown. Uh, one sec, I'll give us a countdown so we can see when the game actually goes. There you go. It's roughly about 12 minutes. So guys, if you need a drink, or a break, or something, do that now. We're just going to sit here and uh, wait for the uh, everything to get set up while Justicia sets a map up for us. I guess, um... You realize you're clicking, right? Oh, sorry. Yeah. It's the case my, uh, what's the word? Mechanical keyboard. Uh-huh. You have voice activation on. So, right. We're looking at the map, we, we saw what the score was, we saw how the, how the, uh, the, the, as we watched the kind of shiny territory flipping. Um, do you think Miller might commit more to an, uh, kind of an Air Force at the beginning? Are they going to copy perhaps the opening play? I don't uh, think the Air Force is the problem. Um, I think they need to see what Cobalt did, which is punish them on Sungry. Um, get Mozarine first, and be very careful about Barrack, because the right hand side of the map has a big advantage in, in, in getting in there. Um, it's justician alcohol, you're allowed to go back and the, the main thing as well, don't, don't get uh, required to remain in the warp gate until the cop central this time around. You're allowed on Emrish in the warp gate. I think Miller also had a problem as well in that they committed loads of people to NC Arsenal from the way too early on the cap. And that meant they had a lot of numbers missing from everywhere else on the map. Hmm, right. Uh, Justy, I just moved you up for two seconds. Would I be correct that we are starting in 11 minutes, roughly? 
on the hour? Yes. Cool. Right, so there you go, guys. On the hour, we're going to be restarting for our second half. Uh, and there'll be another 45 minute half you've got the scores and we're just going to be running off of what you say I'll have a countdown 45 minute clock on my screen so as soon as you count down I'll hit the start button and then we're all good so we know exactly what's happening and where so that sounds awesome thank you right, Justicia cool. do you have any observations or things perhaps you want to give to our viewers here today on um, what you saw or what you think is happening in between the two teams uh, no I did Pay that much attention, and currently I have a lot of preparation to do for the second half, including checking if there are any sunders still up. So I'll see you later. We'll leave you to it. Thank you very much. Busy man, busy, busy man. Right, we'll leave him alone. Okay, so I guess we're looking at the map on the fresh replay. The neutral uh, base flips on the Network Hub, I guess what I can say is Cobalt had a lot more maneuverability, a lot more flexibility. They had the galaxies, they had the ability to fly in. That comes with the air domination though. Yeah, the air domination. Because of the air domination, they have that flexibility to move around. And when every base we looked at, a lot of these bases are open and exposed. It allows that ground pounding to happen. It allows that, um, you know... Uh, you know, interdiction, that kind of like force multiplier on the point on top of all the vehicles. So Miller's having a really hard time moving out because they're always doing, like it's deceptive because when you're doing base defensive play, then you're not as susceptible to aircraft. Uh, however, when you are moving from base to base, so let's say they want to move from Network Hub to the Bastion, or let's say they want to move into Raven's Landing to Lithcorp, you need to get there somehow. And typically the best way there is to fly there and you want to keep the stuff that you've got. You get shot down, then you're stuck where you are. If you're at Lithcorp and you don't have air control, you're, all your sunders and everything you've got is just going to be pounded. And that multiplier can move back and forth around the map as the hotspots dictate it. So, <laughs> Twitch chat, no, there will not be a face camera. It's not going to happen. Can we have a topless camera? Uh, can we have a topless camera? Yeah, right. Gonna get that to... internet money in, dude. The internet money? I don't even have the camera we'll set get up. We'll tips if you get your top off, dude. We'll split the money. Hmm. You've got 289 viewers desperate for it, dude. <laughs> Yes, yes. Um, it's, my dignity costs more than that. We need 300 viewers at least. <laughs> Get your team militia on at least. Team mil You're not team being militia. biased enough. I'm not being biased enough, okay, clearly. That's why That's why I killed what won. You haven't been uh, going behind the scenes adjusting things for them. Yeah, well, they're not playing NC. That's why they're 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 losing right now. And no shotguns. There's no no shotguns, no laggy shotguns. And they're losing because they have habits. It's the only answer. He's like the team mascot now. Well, I thought it was his mom. And his mom and his sister, all of them actually. Well, uh, back to the game in hand here. If you're the commander, what can you objectively do in 15 minutes to reorganize your forces? Do you talk to your platoon leaders? Do you talk to your squad leaders? Do you talk to them over? Like, if you're Cobalt right now, you go, excellent, well done, we've got the advantage, let's just do what we did before, keep the air control, because we should see that works. I mean, where do you go? How do you organize as a leader? What do you say to your, your troops on the ground? It's half time. you've got to do your motivational speech. This is where all that stuff comes in. And what are you going to say? We need to learn from what went wrong last time, which is they just got... At some grade, they should have just given it up. Like, all of their forces were there for so long, doing nothing. Just protecting the base that was really... I mean, this isn't a two-hour match where, you know, losing a big facility with multiple links like that can mean they can go to warp gate or whatever. Like, it's a 45-minute match. They're just not, it's not going to have any ill effect. You really need to think... Bases don't have as much value as they do in a two-hour match. Like, the NC Arsenal is it's just 2% or whatever. It's not, it's not this huge base that sets up something for a long two-hour match. You know, it locks off a lane so you can get more momentum somewhere else. It, you just need to think literally base versus base and, and maximum territory in minimum time. Uh, and for that, I think they, they should just go and get the ascent and they should try and push north like Cobalt did to them and go to Sungray. Because if they take Sungray, ev even if Cobalt gets into the Arsenal, as long as they get a Raxcom Network Cup, which is not hard, they can just cut into the Arsenal off so it doesn't even matter. And, and make sure and see what happens to, uh, to Cobalt in the south. They go push the way back to Tormar. Don't let them do that to you. Or at the very least, get the same territory gain in the north because Wokuk is a much harder possible amp station to take than uh, Sungray is. So you need to make some hard sacrifices and really think about territory gain rather than what actually ter the territory you're actually taking. Like, and is the isn't that valuable? Sungray isn't that valuable? You know, the ascent isn't that valuable? Then they're not 
these sort of solid bases that are going to last for hours. This is just fast. Get, get as much territory as you can. And, there, and if there are errors, there's a problem, then definitely get the sent or whatever. Because you have a lot of AA there, a lot of AA turrets. If you, can't, if you don't have the pilots to beat them, then use somewhere else, something else, like anti-air, or, or tell you guys to take lock-ons, or consider using more maxes. Or get walker centers up. You need, you need to go in the areas of the map where they're more powerful. And North Korea first is a place where walker centers can be really effective. And same with Arax and Barrack. That's what you need to think about. Mm. Just a small change of tactics. But it can be hard to do that, because obviously a lot of that depends on your, your infantry, your people they're playing. Sure. No, no, absolutely. Right, well, we are about three minutes, no, we're about four, just under five minutes, okay, to go uh, until the things. So I am going to put you in charge of the stream so you can do whatever you want uh, while I show the map. I will be back in exactly one minute, and then, uh, yeah, well, you know, I, this would be a good place for a video, wouldn't it? Maybe we could do this. It would be. Do you have yeah. One? No. Yes, no, no. I, it's too much effort, to be honest. Uh, no, I'll get you a video. So th th this is the thing, you know, if, you, if anyone's like a video editor out there, you know, maybe it's your time to shine. Halftime show! Yeah! We could get Katy Perry and Left Shark. What do you think? Oh, no. <laughs> well, I don't Katy Perry, dude. Anyone but Katy Perry. Does that mean you would consent to me having an exceptionally colourful, almost trippy Coldplay halftime show? Yeah, I'd go for Coldplay. Yeah, I think we'll yeah. love that. Yeah, okay. Oh, well, we can't because of copyright re reasons. But anyway, there you go. So, it's something. Um, oh, I know. Where did I put Nanite Ned? Yeah, let's get some Higby in. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, this is kind of awkward. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Never mind. Like, I'm not set up, guys. I'm totally unprepared. It's lack of professionalism. But however, I, what, what we can see is next week will be Briggs versus Emerald. And I believe they're playing on our North-South Esimir map. So I'll try and have some more edgy stuff there. Uh, there are no stats, guys. They're being recorded, but we don't have an overlay. So we're, we, I guess we'll talk about that ever so slightly. Uh, Lampjaw uh, with Mail's Retirement is doing us some really good uh, statistics and work. And he's got all the back-end stuff in, but we just don't have the UI stuff. And he did an all-nighter last night, you know kudos to him unfortunately at two o'clock in the t in the afternoon he then says right here you go i'm off to bed so he's sleeping right now and i'm like all right cool cheers uh how does this work uh okay that's cool it's, it's good it works great and the countdown clock we had no idea what was going to happen with the countdown clock and then all of a sudden bam it worked because then the two hour countdown but he forgot to realize it's two 45 minute halves and we're not actually <laughs> doing it that way and then how would we count in that type of sense and you know what this is more complicated than we think so anyway next week is less complicated because it's just a 90 minute game between uh, Briggs and Emerald and I think Briggs has actually uh, stolen some of the Emerald players I and mean, it's not really like a, t a server on server it's more of a collective of people together so I mean that's that's where we're going yeah so you've got one minute right now I'll be right back Chat decides who the next president of the United States is. Either Donald Trump or Bernie. The one with the most comments wins. Too bad you'll have to wait two minutes for those responses. <laughs> Oh no, I drank two litres of bargain bin Tesco energy drink. It's not good in my bowels. Oh. You can't do a poll vote on a two minute delay, you know that right? And hey Poon, I know how you doing. So it, it'll be in two minutes, it's in the future, it's, you know, temporal logic. I'll, I'll see the results at some point. Oh, I believe my headset stopped working. No, oh, it's working, okay. One minute until Say something the start for me, please, of the second Rick. half. Get ready. What's that? Oh dear, my headset's not working. Hooray for technical GG. issues. Stop the touch by Cobalt. Uh, okay, this is interesting. I have absolutely no audio. <laughs> well, I hope the stream's getting off on again. Say something again. Hey, yeah, memes. 
It's awesome. Oh, yes, Excellent. fantastic, great. I'm gonna go over to the warp gate. I am TR, so I'm gonna go to TR warp gate. I assume we're gonna start it very shortly. Perfect timing. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Match start. Go, go, go. Good luck, everybody. Hey, and I got the countdown clock up there. Fantastic. Went move it around. Okay, second half. Here we go. Cobalt is out to get blood. Miller's here to kind of pull this back. There is a three or four point uh, difference currently because it's 45 to 49 in favor of Cobalt as we're moving into our second half. And we are flying with our ESFs to our starting points. Do you think there'll be an interdiction play again like there was the first time round? It worked last time, so why not? Flight time is maybe a slight difference between the warp gates, although I'm sure teams have got this calculated out. Let's go just follow the sign. Yeah, looks like a strong push. Looks like perhaps a ESF push to bar. Yeah, I think, uh, think mm. Cobalt got on North Korea before Miller got on Moss Street, so they might have one out there. Uh, I don't think they've been interdicted on Lithcop this time. No, it looks like uh, Cobalt has managed to get themselves to Raven's Landing. They're flipping that. And in terms of Raven's Landing... Oh no, Cobalt is on the point. But, and Miller's Air Force is overhead. Uh, it's kind of exposed. Oh, no, the capture point's already been flipped. Doesn't matter. I think Miller might have overcommitted this time. So, the interdiction play worked because he got so scared this time around. They said 2448 to Lithcop. Just to make sure it go through. <laughs> Okay, well, I want to fight at the ascent. I want to fight on the A point in the in the caverns, uh, man. That's like the best place ever. Miller's already got themselves uh, a sunder from twin sunders. Okay, so they hacked the vehicle terminal at Tumas cargo facility. It's just too free for. Go steal or axe come the last two minutes. So you can steal any base now. So. That is true. Neutral base capturing. It's it's still possible. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's it's, it's kind of stressful for the force commander sending the right forces in the right place at the right time. And having that air control in the first like three, four minutes, allowing you to the freedom to movement is very important. Oh no, no, why did you bail? Dude, you had an ESF, why did you bail? There's few uh, walkers from Miller. There's even a dual fast list, Cassandra. So... <sighs> yeah, Miller's trying to get their sunders up into the... Looks like, I mean, it doesn't look like it's going to be as easy as a time on Tumas Cargo Facility. It's quite hotly contested by both teams. However, the capture point is lightly held by Miller inside. They don't have any kind of multipliers such as vehicles or sunders to kind of counteract the numbers. Uh, it's 50-50 right now, and the Air Force flying around. Miller actually has more people, they must have more people inside the building itself. While we're in here watching the fight that's uh, going down, we'll have a quick number. The thing is, Cobalt has the freedom of movement to pull in as many people as they want when they want. Barrack Electrical, big over pop for... Uh, Cobalt. Uh, and we see that, yeah, Cobalt's also getting Raven's Landing. Miller's getting Lithcorp Central, so it won't be a free go either way there. Um, however, actually, Miller could hypothetically interdict Raven's Landing at the last second because they'll get Lithcorp Central first. So that's possible. Uh, our Axcom Network Hub is a 50 50 going on, two minutes to go, no team has real ascendancy. NC Arsenal's not really going anywhere, and it's Cobalt I is losing. Uh, Miller are getting pushed off to Muscaga. Oh man, I just stopped looking at the map. At the worst time as well, two minutes. It doesn't matter about two minutes, it's a, third, it's a large paced base, so it's the fact that you can steal it on the one second marker. Yeah, yeah, true, actually, yeah, true. Yeah. And Miller have paradoxically decided to commit to Barak Electrical now, but they've given them time to set up. I don't know if they have Sunderers, but I'll go have a quick look. Hmm. Well, the uh, thing is, two minutes to go. The thing is, Cobalt is way more established now than what Miller was. And the fact is, they've got the air control, they've got the Sunders on the building, they have tons of infantry, all the multipliers outside. This is easily yeah. a Cobalt base. And all right. I'm a bit confused as to why Miller even committed to Barrack. I thought they were sacrificing it because it's just involved. Yeah, Cobalt have got masses of Sunders inside there. Miller oh, really man. And a Barrack oh. electrical. See, the problem with Barrack Electrical is it's, it's Cobalt that's got the multipliers inside on the capture building. Oh, nice parking of that Sunder. Dude, how do you even park it like that? That's Austin Powers parking. Go inside the capture point at Barrack Electrical. They're using the Sunders to block the uh, entrances into the cap zone. There's absolutely no way Miller's getting in there. Yeah, that's, I, I thought Miller did turn up there for a long time, so I thought they should sacrifice it, which would make sense, but no, they like, decided to paradoxically commit after giving them enough time to set up. That's a quick two easy bases uh, for Cobalt now. Taking a, I mean, every base is precious. Uh, Tim Scargo's gonna go through, right, Keith. 
It'll be interesting. It doesn't look like they've got anyone actually going to Raven's Landing. If anything, it looks like there are numbers from Cobalt on Lithgorp Central and also Araxcom uh, Network Hub 2448. Let's go check that out. I mean, it doesn't look like uh, Miller's going to make a difference here. Cobalt has got control. Do they keep the... Looks like the air control is still up. Looks like they've got all There's the... There's a Miller yeah, heading towards Raven's Landing now. It's just nice to get all his troops stripped out and they've... Oh, 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 this, yeah, as we said, interdiction entirely oh, possible. they could steal this, they could steal it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, because they're the previous base, oh, they can actually yeah. steal this. One oh, second steal. Oh, 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 here he goes, here he goes. <laughs> Lithgar Central's <laughs> through the ascent's going to be a free capture. Here we go, three seconds to go. That's really smart. Smart. <laughs> so smart. Yes, yes, that's what we're talking about. That, that's smart play, so that's awesome. I love that. Okay, so... It means the ascent now, once it starts flipping, is going to be hands on the Miller, and the Miller can start threatening Araxis farms. Large outposts, just threaten it, you know, that type of stuff. But keep it ticking down. Well, so I think just do what Cobalt did last game and go all the way to Sangre. Just yeah. go all the way there. The thing is, uh, NC Arsenal is tilting down. I, I don't like the fact that Miller's got so many people on NC Arsenal. I, the, the reason they probably have them there is because they were kicked out of Araxum Network Cup. Miller needs to make sure the Bastion doesn't really tick down or go anywhere. Uh, they can't really afford to be hit behind because if Bastion flips, um, uh, then they get cut off in the center. Ascent, Lithcorp Central, Raven's Landing, all of that gets cut off. Uh, we see a small harassment attack going on going the tech plant. Okay, <laughs> Cobalt's responded. They've reacted now to the Raven's Landing. Has he even got Galaxy? A couple of people dropping on the roof. Obviously, Miller needs to defend it for three minutes at least so they can get Ascent for free, otherwise the Ascent could get stolen. Yeah, that's the thing. The, the, the Ascent, I guess you could say that Cobalt is... No, no, okay, the points are slowly beginning to flip. Uh... Ah, right, so Cobalt is actually believed as defending the capture points. I think it's... Uh... At the ascent, if that makes sense, they're doing interdiction play at the ascent. Yeah, and they're putting a lot of people on Raven's Landing. And oh man, they've so. even got okay. Here we go, Galaxy. Come on, dude. Here we go, Core Combat. Yes, let's go, heavies. Did you just say Core Combat. Yeah, it's Core Combat. That's just what the A capture points like. Uh, oh, ascent. Oh yeah, in the caves, right? Cave trolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He confused me for a second. Man. Just don't have BFRs. There's two TR in here on the higher ground. Watch out on the left. He gets them. Gonna flip the point. Gunfight between the long range. Okay, loses the second gunfight. However, the flip capture point is flipping. As soon as he got it, it's his. Uh, the TR's gonna come and try and stop him. No, it's too late. Done. Right, capture point A is captured. And the yeah, A. got to fire in short control bursts. Nah, yeah, well, the fact is, now that that's done, all of these um, TR forces are here. They're all dead population. All Miller needs to do now is get, is get Bravo and save Laven's Landing. That's it. Oh, nice stealth sunder here. There's a stealth sunder on the Bravo capture point. Um, thing is, the Miller Force, look, flying in ECS, ESF. Do you have accurate? Oh, Infiltrator, put down a mine on behind. He's flipping the point Miller now. Force, Miller Force does see Arsenal, seems to be losing and they're getting the game, though, because it's just so many people that are sitting around doing nothing. Like, I don't know why they're doing that. Like, okay. We're in a really good position if they have all those people on see Arsenal. Okay, so the ascent is ticking. All of the uh, 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 Miller numbers from the VS from ascent now needs to leave and go to Raven's Landing and help defend that. That is the most important thing. That gives oh, you ascent for free. Make sure it doesn't get stolen because it might do. That I guess is another big play. I uh, think is you don't want to be fighting at Lithgorp Central and the ascent for long periods of time. And we see that uh, Mosserveen is being saved, sorry, defended, as they've just captured it. And you're right, we'll go to NC Arsenal 138. Looks like Miller's uh, also attacking Araxcom Network Hub. They're saving Tuma's tech plant, and Aramex currently isn't going anywhere. So right now, Miller's got a small lead, and they're potentially going to push it more with the Ascent, but they need to leave there and go and you know go to the right basis, right? We're going to go to NC Arsenal here. We see Miller's making the second play again. This is the second time that Miller has made the opening play for NC Arsenal. Let's see if they can keep it this time. Then again, if you're Cobalt, do you turn up at like the last minute? And, and have you got your forces ready to move out? Because right now, your forces are tied down at Raven's Landing, making sure that you grab it, right? I don't really see anything else where, yeah. It's Miller's Air Force is here. Go. Miller could get on Barrack as well in this time. Just get some cylinders on Barrack, get them set up, and then you can go there anytime. As soon as you've got cylinders yeah. inside the base, it's a guaranteed cap. So. Uh, whoever's down there, whatever outfits are in the south, need to get Sunders inside and, and just get the set up. 
Well, we'll stay here with NC Arsenal to see if anything fishy happens. I don't think Cobalt. this is going to get stolen. There's They've a lot of a couple of here. ESFs. Yeah, I mean, they're locking this down. I mean, but at what cost? Are they going to lose Ravens Landing for this? Yeah, they can redeploy straight in, though. They just need to get everyone to redeploy into Ravens Landing. I, I, with the time, though, it might and be a bit too short. There's a lot of pressure here on uh, the Cobalt forces because the Ascent's going to go, the Ravens Landing, they need to stay and defend. They can't necessarily go to a Raxcom Network Hub to help save that. That's going to be captured in one minute. Well, the Miller forces are uh, Cobalt. Uh, they were being capped at Sungry Power. We'll see how that goes. Is the Raxcom Network Cup going to go through for Miller? One minute. Possibly. All right, I'm going to head oh, here now. saved by Cobalt now. I don't know how. Well, that's what they're putting their numbers in, so they're, they're not making oh, a play a NC Arsenal. Here, yeah, a lot of, a lot of Cobalt Miller's strong. got a lot of numbers, though, now to you know necessarily go where they need to send them. Uh, Raven's Landing is the one that needs to be safe. If Miller makes this count, it's got to be that Raven's Landing safe. If they can stop that, then they get the Ascent for free, and that's a two-base uh, kind of play. Oh, but they're all pinned in, all pinned in the, in the uh, spawn room. No they one's really defending the cap capture point. They need to get a cap on Westgate, and then they just need to go save Ravens. But yeah, you'd have to drop that base, and you don't have long to do it. You'd have to fly in, and that's the problem. In ESF you fly, uh, you don't have the galaxy, the flight time. So the ascent's going to get really heated here. Now, Mailers could theoretically drop their NCRs. Oh, well, I'll tell you what. They may just be sacking it. It could be different forces here. They may just be applying maximum pressure on Sungri Amp Station. They're redeploying in Ravens, though. I think it's a bit of a misplay. No, I know with nine seconds to go, it's a waste of time. It's yeah, a waste of a max. Dude, a max? What? Dude, on three seconds to go, you don't do maxes. You don't... Oh, my God. Look at that redeployment. Bad play by Miller. Bad slap. Ah, that's annoying. Okay, so it's 48 to 40, 45 currently on the map. It's actually going to, I think, flip to 47, 46 with Ravens landing because the map takes a little while to update. Uh, Miller's making a... Uh, actually, it's Cobalt that's taking the tech plant. Let's go check that out in the south. Five minutes, 50, though. It's a long time. Yeah, a long, long, long time. But we've still got 33 minutes left in this half. It's a it's a light hold with infantry only. And it looks like Miller's brought himself uh, deployed under, underneath. Are you going to deploy for me? No? Yes? Maybe? No? You're just going to drive away into the mines? Okay. Not entirely sure what that Sunder was up to, but he uh, didn't do very much. Yeah, well, it doesn't look... with Corp, so all those people on Ravens were wasted. Okay, so while Miller's playing a, making the play on Sungri West, uh, Cobalt is holding and currently keeping the fight between Moss Ravine and Sungri Power Hub. That's not going anywhere. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a full save on Araxicom. Lithcorp, you're right, is ticking. And the fact is, this is another very important play. The Ascent will go through regardless of what happens. One team will take it or the other one, right? So the fact is, by aggressively attacking Lithcorp, you're cutting off Miller's ability to capture the Ascent. Or if you do capture the Ascent, no, you cut you off can, the cap reinforcement. No, the cap, they, they can still change it. Right, but if they cut it off, it, keeps the, it means that if the Ascent does go through for Miller, they'll be cut off and they won't have the ability yeah. to spawn back in. Yeah. So, I mean, at the beginning of this game was very good for uh, Miller, but it's still 46-46 now, and although Miller's doing offensive play in the north, they're beginning to lose control of the map in the middle and definitely the south. I mean, they need to get the tech plant back, but Cobalt's doing an exceptionally good job here, uh, holding on to the tech plant, forcing these long times to tick down, because if you hold the tech plant for five minutes and you don't capture F7, it doesn't matter. It means that your uh, cargo facility is safe for five minutes and you can apply pressure, pressure elsewhere. I don't know how Barak is captain yet, but if they're going to go through Westgate and then they can just cap Sungri and they cut off Moss Ravine. So everyone from Moss Ravine just needs to go to Sungri Westgate and push Sungri. Then they can just cut it off anyway. Like Miller slowly pushing into the capture point. And only a couple of forces on the tech plant. Still yeah, just not quite enough. Oh wow, okay, so yeah. There's still strong squad here by Cobalt, controlling the cap point, controlling the battle collector. There's just not enough numbers from Miller here to, even though they got 52%, they're not actually, you know, cohesively pushing in as a squad and grabbing it. It's all kind of solo warrior play at the moment. It's not like team play. SCU compromised. And the SCU's now compromised the tech plan. And the best thing for Miller to do with these numbers is to drive over AV mines and then maybe deploy. Yeah, deploy in the center. There you go. Now deployed Sunder. Now you actually have the strength of the defenders on the tech plant. Now it's up to the TR from Cobalt to get down into the vehicle bay area. Or sorry, the, the central underground uh, driveway area and get rid of it. Which is what they're doing with uh, some rockets. Mm, not quite. 
I think is if you're gonna pull two Sunderers, pull a proxy repair. There you go, Mr. Proxy Repair. In you come, repair him. Thank you. But it's it's still poor play from Miller. Miller should have saved this ages ago, and they're allowing it to tick down. It's just it's giving the enemy way too much momentum. And Lithcorp, you're right, 50-50, 35 seconds, and the ascent is stalled, possibly gonna go in the favour now of Cobalt. Alright, I'm gonna assume that Cobalt is gonna get pushed off and Miller's gonna get the tech plant as we head on over to Lithcorp. I don't understand where Miller's forces are, they just seem to be wasting numbers. And losing everything. Right. Yeah, 19 seconds, Combat Sunder on the point, deployed at A, reinforcements coming in from Cobalt, it looks like they're gonna get Lithcorp. And they're gonna get the ascent. This is just falling away from Miller and the Bastion's under attack, so they can't go for Raxum Network up. Well, well, I guess they could from the well, they see They're being pushed back from Sungri Westgate, and okay, Miller is attacking Power Hub, and that is ticking down. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, things they got fifty nine percent. Get in Barrack, get in Barrack with Sungris, and go Yolo. Okay, well that's Lithcorp now. Go Yolo, now Sungri, go Yolo Barrack. Yeah. And the Ascent, I mean, Miller could do like a, a drop-in like they did at Raven's Landing. That was a beautiful play, but it would mean that they were cut off. I don't think you're going to get into the... I just sacrificed it, to be honest. <laughs> These galaxies around these unders. Ooh, nice AV man attempt. He dropped an ammo pack just for good measure. <laughs> he dropped a, an AV mine, a grenade, and an ammo pack to get rid of the Miller Sunder that's currently on A point. Uh, if we go check inside, yeah, it looks like Miller does have deployed, or uh, well, combat Sunders inside the capture point at Barrack Electrical, but they're on the point itself, which means actually this is bad play because they're on the point, they're not on the sideways watching the doorways coming in, they'd have a better impact currently if they were here rather than on the point itself because on the point I can get a lot of cover and I can get in and bomb this and the firing arcs great because you can hide behind this cover. 301 viewers you're now illegally obliged to do a top of stream. What? Are you kidding me? No I'm not. Oh man. And see this is the thing, okay so the Sunder should be here firing on that Sunder there and... Man. Nice save on Sungri by Tia. Pahub's gone saved. You had to tell me that we went over 300. No, no it's 299, so you'd have to get top of sleep. We can still win this. Why are the 4896 Miller are at 2? I, I don't understand why that even needs 4896 to defend the tech one. Like, if you get a Sunder inside, you should be able to defend it with 40%. So, are these both proxy reps? They're not! One's a proxy rep, one isn't. They should be both proxy reps. Guys, if you're gonna attack the base, do it properly at least. Come on, this is just pure form. You're making it easy for Cobalt. Still, there's a minute 40 to go because of the Sundras. Oh, do check that info out! <laughs> How did you get in there? This is tiny little info trail. Check this out, right now at the capture point. Thing is, uh, it doesn't matter because there's more VS, but the fact is he is threatening the cap point if the you know Vanu forces of Miller move away. Dude, I've forgotten even how to add a web camera. I don't even know how it works. Can't be that difficult. Ugh. Just get on my free cams. Get some extra money in for PSP. Oh, my sensitivity feels so weird after not having played fast. I have like six months. Okay, can you see this max push coming in? Now they've got the extra forces coming in. It's, it's 35 seconds at Barrack. There's a big TR numbers Huge here. Huge numbers. Sunder 1's down, Sunder 2's down, 23 seconds to go, there you go. I still feel the Sunders were in the wrong location, and there wasn't enough of them. But the thing is, it's a big number redeployed to make that happen. The tech plant looks like it'll finally be resecured. Araxicom Network Hub's light numbers. Miller's 1 minute 50 on Sungri West. I guess I'll go to Sungri West. 
So we're Western Rats coming up in the next two big ones. Oh well, surprise, surprise, Miller uh, is losing to the Cobalt Air Force. Capture point on the inside. It's such a clunky base to hold because of the king of the hill kind of cap point. And if there wasn't an air force and dropping in, that would actually be kind of interesting, but... They're not going to hold this for not two minutes. Yeah, so it's not going to go anywhere. Right, okay, um... Where what are the next? This is really what... It seems to be air force are the problem with all these buildings, but it's, it's, it's so open, this area of the map. Just have some rocks under it, there's the arsenal or something, like... Uh... I don't know, if Mimo doesn't seem to be using the equipment, right. If you're losing to air and your air is not winning, then you need to support them with anti-air. Bring some walkers in. Or uh, there was a lot of um, new players to service match, I think, on the Miller team. So, I mean, I think they're getting a real baptism of fire from Cobalt, who's like, you know, don't take us lightly. Uh, right. 1 to 12 in our XCOM, it's 155. Two, wow, dude, check Tuma's cargo facility numbers. It's 48 plus on both teams almost. Oh, yeah, 4896 from TR. Okay, how's... Oh my goodness. Dude, BS what? As well. There's a huge... No, oh, no, this is the difference, right? Miller is playing into their kind of old habits here. They're doing an attack on the base, but they do not control the outside of the base, the surrounding area, whenever... One sec. Oh, Mubot's gone, thank god for that. Hey, that shit. Right, so as I was saying, Cobalt is controlling the outer area, so when they attack a base, they control not only the capture point, but all the surrounding area, making it very hard for the defenders to get to the point, having to rely on other resources. Right now, Miller's getting to the base, and then they're basically desperately trying to hold on on the inside, and that, it's just so hard. Fire. Get fire. Get fire. There's, there's a squad of Miller Maxes in the hills. Nearby. What? Like, just doing, I don't even, what, I don't know what they're doing, they're just here, achieving something. Uh, they're, they're literally a squad in the hills of, of, of VS Maxis, I'm really confused. I don't see them. Oh wait, hello. Now I do. And yeah. they're being shot at from behind by a light assault. They're <laughs> anti-air. They are anti-air. <laughs> they're shooting the light assault. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the purpose of this is though, because there's, there's no one here, they're just going to leave. Okay, Axcom got saved, but there seems to be more Miller forces deploying there now. Yes, just gal drops back in, even more people on the Raxcom network, but I don't think they're gonna do anything because they're kind of outnumbered here. Nice cock laser. Everyone doing camera right. I don't have a camera set up and I, I don't actually remember how to set the damn thing up, so stop asking. Crap, I figured it out. Fine, I figured it out later, maybe, if I actually get some peace in the night. When it gets dark. <laughs> night time coming. Okay, we're watching here uh, the Miller uh, defense on uh, RMX Chemical Co. Triple quad. Wow, quad. Penta Sun uh, Lightnings on the south. Uh, what's going penta on there? Lightnings. Yeah, Penta Lightnings. It's uh, Miller. Is it Miller? Is it Miller? It's yeah, Miller's got lightnings lightning in the parking. south. Yeah. It's Miller lightning parking lot strategy, dude. We we born from Hassan, and we brought like fifty my lightnings. Made a little used car salesman. How this one brings everyone to she gets around. Well, Miller could take a Rexcom or Power Hub, but I think he needs to commit to one. <laughs> yeah. 
Yep, so we're looking at RMX Chemical Co. and uh, we got the VS, uh, I guess, trying to, from Miller to get back their own base. They're doing a base safe here. I mean, they got the vehicle terminal. There's no reason why they shouldn't be able to get it. They're getting rid of the deployed Sunder. That's great. Uh, but it's the, it's the problem is the no air control. There's a maximum altitude Galaxy is providing a limitless, uh, you know, squad spawning drop in uh, resupplies on the capture point. It's an exposed capture point. This is a really easy base to take if you have um, kind of air control. I think we're gonna get our ass come though. Uh, a lot of uh, mozzies just turned up at Sunbury Power Hub, but in exchange, I think Miller will get our axe come. Oh, yeah, okay, well, uh, might be able to get there in a few seconds. All right, let's go check out. 12 seconds. And we're here. Oh, no, it's flipping! And it's done! Oh, no, no Miller right. didn't. No, it's just not going right for Miller. The problem is just the way they're doing it. It's, they don't have area control of the bases. They're getting to the base when it's perhaps quiet, and then they're staying inside the building, and they're not controlling the surrounding area. And it's because, uh, realistically, I think it's just Cobalt's Air Force is slaughtering them. Okay, what we got? Uh, they're losing the Sungri Power Hub, they're losing the Sungri Westgate, although they were attacking. Uh, the the, the Raxcom Network Hub, they've been pushed off. Oh, and I've somehow gone underneath. Um, the tech plant is being re-threatened again, and the RMX, so go check the south. So, I mean, Miller's been held to a stale draw at the moment uh, in the south, but uh, they're losing in the south. Yeah, if they lose the RMX, then it could go badly for them in the south. I mean, currently the turret control is 49 to 45 again. So, yeah, they not really going anywhere. In, um, in the north, though, if they get through to Sungry, they just need to get through those two bases. They just need, they never seem to be able to, they just get pushed back. Yeah, time. and the tech plant is, I mean, they had a full save on the tech plant, allowing them to push all the way up to Tuma's cargo facility, but now it's, it's back. Yeah. Aramax saved at least. Yeah, Aramax, we're currently watching there, and there's a save. At least something's going right for them. <laughs> Three shots when they just caught up. They're getting played like a fiddle, though, in the north. Yeah, yeah. Cobalt is okay. just we're pulling them around every single base and just leading them on, and they never seem to capture anything, and they waste a lot of time. Right, okay, so um, the Aramax is a save, 60% pop. Now we're looking at f uh, roughly even numbers, but Miller slightly out popped at Tumis uh, Tech Plant. Uh, Aramax saved, yeah, okay, so Miller's oh, reapplying pressure at Sungry West. Actually, kind of, we'll check the Tech Plant out here. I mean, <sighs> losing a large outpost like a Tech Plant, it's the air control. I mean, just look at this, the air control is dominating again on the Tech Plant, controlling any and all outside vehicle interference, meaning that Miller is forced to take the tunnels or to run the gauntlet from Banana into the double doors. The point is flipping. Is that a Sundra underneath? It is a Sundra underneath. Is it deployed? It is deployed underneath. SU's destroyed at the Tech that's Plant. Not that's as fine as long as they have Sundra. Yeah, the Sundra that's deployed in that one area. Look at the but it's, it's close. It, I got blown up. Oh, they got another one. Picnic basket. Uh, well, they've got the internal control, they've got the plant. Things need to repair the SEU though at, at some point, but it's just <laughs> the external swarming of air control. Uh, right, Sungry West, that's the one that's potentially going to go yeah, through for Miller. Yeah, Oh See, man. Because they can drop on the roof, and they can fire at every window, this is like the worst cat point to try and hold. The worst. 
Look at, look at the number of to do. Dude, they're, they're basically staying on the double building, yeah, they're on staying the on the staircase that leads from... It, it works, it works. Yeah, but it's so... I mean, I mean, you don't have Max coming around the corners and shotguns, but it's like... really freaking hard. If you had air control and external area of this, and I keep going back to the same thing, it'd be so easy! Yeah, just get some rock centers up, because it's so open this area of the map. If you have a rock centers, they can, you can snipe them from so far away. They just can't hover like that, at least. Okay, so currently the score is still 45 to 49. Moss Ravine is actually flipping back. It's being saved, but it was being attacked. So the score is the same as it was in the first half. The tech the part is being saved. Nice, six plus. Oh, nice, nice six. Just a bit of nerve commitment. Uh, okay, so uh, my game clock is correct to the referee. 15 minutes, so uh, it's still 49, 45. <laughs> Miller needs to flip like four, five, six bases realistically. Uh, pull this back. Oh, Miller pulled some uh, walks in the Oh, it's then, sorry, uh, it's the apple. But it's a bit late, because they've already lost the base, so uh, it'll be attack. And they're going YOLO rather than sitting back and just destroying the air. Yeah, well, there's a huge number of infantry forces currently arming, so on the, uh, building, and they bring in more and more reinforcements to the Gats, it's just, it's just the freedom of movement that they currently have. Burster Max on the cap, on the roof of the cap building, it's just been rocket podded from all directions. Well. Yeah, it's just... But look, the air control here is all powerful. All powerful. Give me a second. I've been drinking nothing but kick from Tesco's for the past like 30 minutes now. It's about then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Minute 25 with overwhelming uh, control here. I don't see how Miller's going to pull this off in a the defense. They're going to have to run from the spawn room through an air gauntlet, like burster maxes. Lots of burster maxes. Okay, that's a step in the right direction. Now what? Fresh reinforcements, perhaps? Liberating all galaxies thing from behind. They still got the cap point. Alright, here comes the Miller push. Air's been cleared. Swapping to AV weaponry. Phew. Uh, Miller's pushing on the cap point now. Oh, there's AV mines for the Maxes as they come through. Uh, okay, Miller's got 25 seconds to get to the capture point. They're surrounding on th uh, two sides of the cap point at the moment. Possibly on the south as well, so... Look at Moss Ravine though, <laughs> it's a huge one of uh, Tiana. Miller's maybe making a save on the 18 second marker? Both teams on the cap point. Oh, but Cobalt's collapse on the capture point. Miller! Oh, but now Miller's collapsing on the capture point! It's a three second, two second, flipping on two seconds. Has Miller got it back? It's Red's grenades. What's going to happen? Uh, I don't know. It's like, uh, I think um, Co die. That's Miller. No, cool. no, nah, nah, man. It's cool. Miller's got it. Miller has got it just. It's Bias. still. Yeah, but it's, it's, it was close. The Cobalt population is slowly beginning to die off. The Air Force is kind of loitering on the edges. The Wall Street, though. Huge amount of the population there, and Miller don't have time to get Ah, uh, that's true. Yep, yep. They're gonna push it perhaps up to this. Why don't we have a smash for everything except the knives is banned? We can reenact medieval warfare. I'm not sure that's how it works, and you'd need to have shields for that to make it any interesting. Well, you have the NC Max, dude, then they have shields. And they <laughs> they, they, they have like these Greeks with the shields, they can have a phalanx formation, and then you'd have your, you have your other empires that would have a special ability, like locking down in the melee combat. <laughs> So Medieval like, server smash? Uh, you can do that one. <laughs> yeah, and you have to have, like, you know they have ATVs, the guy can ride in the back with his knife out, it'll be like a horse. That'll, that'll be the cavalry. 
Okay, here comes the push in the 10 second marker. Max has crashed push. into the point. Can they, get in? they got infantry. Infantry's in the 5 second marker. They're gonna have enough people. They just need to run up to the point. To oh, up. 4 seconds save. I wonder if Miller's using some sort of QRF uh, and just pulling people back and forth. Resonate for the... Uh, well, they're, they're, oh, they're the they're resonate. Nice. Go on, we attack it. Nice. Thing is, is that deployed Sunder outside? Uh, no, it's not. It's not. It's yeah. too close. However, uh, no, I think Miller might have. Oh, wait, no. The Cobalt have all the Sunders around. They must have a deployed one somewhere. Oh, the fresh no, Cobalt's pushed back deployed. from the capture point. That's it. Oh, Miller nice. forces have all been pushed off. They're going to flip the point. It's only a few seconds. Miller had a deploy. They yeah, they've got to deploy Sunder, but the sun AV mines got rid of it. Three seconds to go. Miller's kind of pushing, but it's too late. Cobalt's already on the capture point, and they're going to get it. Uh. That was nice. Nice for your attack. Well, that's Moss Ravine. It's, it's going to be stuck. It's going to go back. Uh, it looks like our Axicom network hub is being saved by the TR. Miller was doing an attack on Lithcorp. In fact, they still are with a minute and 13, but it's it's like those desperate attacks you're doing. You know, when you attack the point, you hold only the cap point, you don't have up there. They're just doing anything yeah. different. They're just, doing, just attacking for the sake of attacking. It's not a plan. Not the, yeah, the way they're attacking is poor, which means after three minutes, when when the enemy comes with their you know their strength, you just can't hold for that last 60 seconds by having all those extra forces, multipliers and things keeping the enemy back. It's better here at Lithcorp, they have got the Sunder set up, double Sunder, one deploy, uh, one um, blockade, and a nice deployed, I love this, there's a deployed um, deploy Sunder uh, with deploy shield blocking the road up to the capture point, preventing the TR from getting up. Oh, okay, galaxy reinforcement on the top, something that Cobalt can do with the air control. They're dropping down onto the Sunders. AV mines dropping down on the Sunders. The Sunders are so close, AV mines might bring them both off. No, okay, so the second one's critically damaged. Capture point with 14 seconds to go. Here comes the air force for Cobalt. They might make a save here. Can Miller hold onto this? Well, they've cleared off the first gal drop. Incoming second gal, got any numbers for it to drop? Four seconds not enough. There's not enough people for Cobalt to pull this off. Looks like Miller's going to get it. But, I mean, only because... Um, Cobalt was caught napping. If they turn up a little bit later, all these multipliers, all this air force, pfft, never had a chance. And the fact is, can they hold this? Because with all these multipliers currently here for Cobalt, they could easily recapture this base. And the tech plant's ticking down again, 3 minutes and 30. It seems like Cobalt Looks just like wants to rub salt. Come, though. They're going to keep the pressure up at least, but again, they need to bring some anti-air or else they have a plan for when the air force comes in. Try and hold from a further position. Lots of um, Cobalt air over Lithcorp as well now that it's getting ticked towards Millis, uh, towards Cobalt. Where is... Oh, a bunch of Miller somewhere. Are they on the balcony? Yeah, they're on the balcony. The thing is, I always just see Cobalt Galaxies and Mozzies and every balcony flying around with impunity. And that's the advantage they're having from having the air dominance. They have free movement of everything. Oh god, I wonder how laggy it is. Just look at the number of... Seven minutes remaining in the match. Rolling wow, grenades on the ground. <laughs> is that a Jaeger problem or is it? Uh, when you got heavy lag, uh, grenades can roll on the ground and delay. The thing is, the the uh, Miller forces on the balcony, the tech plant, trying to push their way in. Is that them finally getting the balcony? Okay, they're getting balcony control now. Ah, uh, uh, Lithcorp Cobalt have a Sunder literally deployed in the point, so he please fix. That's so broken. <laughs> the defenders have no chance with that. That's definitely going to go through to Cobalt. Unless, uh, Miller, unless Cobalt decides to try and take the uh, tech plant instead. Well, it looks like Miller's made a save in the Tumis tech plant. They're getting pushed uh, back to North Grove though. Big numbers there. Uh, I'll go check out that. We'll, I will swing by Lithcorp and we'll go to North Grove. Big max pull by Miller at North uh, Lithcorp. And that the Cobalt Air Force is using Ascent to rearm and repair. It's pretty useful for that. Yeah, you know, it gives you control in the center, that's for sure. Oh wow, a Miller Valkyrie. Hello. Where are you going and what are you doing?
Really? Really? Okay. Now what? Now what? You can't flip that point because you don't own the previous base. So what are you doing here? Derp. He's using mind powers, suit. Jedi mind powers. Yeah. And the arsenal's just getting kicked down by Tall 24 on Makovo. So, PSBX 0005VS. Not sure what you're doing here, bro, but okay. Uh, on the assumption that you saved Lithcorp, I suppose. Uh, well, Cobalt had a really good center on the point in the Lithcorp, so I think unless Miller deal with that, they're gonna lose the base, even with Overpop. Yeah, 60 seconds still, to it's go. Still alive. It's, I think it's undeployed. No, no, no. They have two, three Sunderers there, yeah. Yeah, it's... Massive Overpop by Miller here. Oh, they're, yeah, they're, they're gonna lose this, like I said before. Just, those Sunderers are so strong. The thing is, Miller can get the, the top ground and, and they, they kind of have it, but still being fired on by light assaults from behind, they're not paying attention so to. Still just making me really hungry for some reason, I don't understand why. <laughs> I'm so hungry. I fancy, I fancy like a calzone or something. There's not enough cheese in this service match now. I need a cheesy pizza or something. I can't wait for the, uh, the building mechanics to get put in, for the ANT, that'll be crazy in service match. Melkor post is maybe gonna go through to Cobalt, you might want to get over there and have a look. It's gonna be really close. I'd say Lithcop's definitely gonna go through to Cobalt, but uh, North, if North Cobalt goes as well, it'll be a big uh, swing in territory. Yeah, so the tech plant is not capturable anymore. RMX theoretically is. Uh, North Grove can still go through. Uh, NC Arsenal, not really, it's not gonna go. Uh, RMX can't be gone. So we're, we're cu cutting down now to the last few bases. Uh, it's really between. RMAX is stalled, now it's been saved. Um, if it doesn't get flipped in the next like 20 seconds, it's not gonna go. So it's all gonna go north, north growth. Battle rank 9, oh yeah. Can I also, I'm battle rank 18. How come you all can't sell low level? It's observer 1. Because no one ever plays TR. <laughs> Here we go, oh wow, okay, so. <laughs> Fresh reinforcements by the deployed uh, Sunderer by, from Cobalt onto the capture point with Maxis. Minute and 14 to go. They're pushing into <laughs> Miller's territory. <laughs> Miller just pulled the Sunderer out of the contempt. There was literally about 30 of you playing and it just went to space. <laughs> <laughs> and then his squad mates who were waiting for it just got bombed by a mosquito. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> I've got a feeling that Cobalt have got this. They've got a really nice defense. They've got a harasser driving around with the Marauder bombing everything. Push the it's. I don't see how Miller can save this. Even if the Galaxy Yolo. I mean, they're so close to their warp gate. They could just. 20, 12 to 4, 24 in there. At least 38 seconds. Drop on double doors. Run in. I, you don't want to run from the spawn room. Put Zerg's in your meta, dude. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, Cobalt's got a pretty convincing, dominating victory here. Uh, they're going to go up to probably 51 to 43 if they get the space. Cargo facilities ticking doesn't matter. Uh, let's see, what's the timer? No, this is the only base that matters right now. Oh wait, NC Arsenal can also go through. NC Arsenal can also go through. Picnic basket. We'll watch the space, make sure it goes. And Yep, right, it's the base, the Cobalt. Right, okay, now... The last base that is potentially in contention right now is NC Arsenal with... Oh wait, no, okay, so holding one capture point on the A is enough to stall this out of time. And he only has to hold it. This one hero medic only has to stall them for a few seconds. Oh, what? Behind you, dude! Behind you! Behind you! No! Turn around! No! Okay, was it enough to stall? Well, we'll find out in a second here. Minute 20 in the clock. How long on the base flip? Minute 10. Oh, just! Right, Cobalt so needs to hold like for 5 seconds. They need to flip a point for like 5 seconds. Uh, yeah, every, everyone's here. Oh, this is the last thing, so everyone should turn up here now. There is so many mosquitoes. Oh, God. Yeah.
clutching on the cat points. Miller's got the problem of they just can't get to the cat buildings. They just need to get to a point for a few seconds. But with the overwhelming air control by uh, Cobalt. I don't see they're going to pull us. They're going to cap this. It's like a three second gap between the base and... Oh wait, wait, wait! Alpha is flipping! Alpha is flipping! 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. End of match. Oh! Of match. Congratulations. Oh! Oh! So for winning with a percentage okay. that I don't do know have to, because do you have the action I'm counting part? the NC Arsenal cap. Oh, oh, the referee he heard him. So the percentage still has to update. Wow, he got it. They got it. They got it. That's like a point one, point zero zero one capture. We need, uh, we need also a Professor Farnsworth with his uh, quantum microscope. But you changed the result by measuring it. Yes. <laughs> I believe that is fifty three against forty one for the second half. All right. Final results, there we go. Please get the force commanders in the interview channel. Thank Can you, you give us the total scores then, please? For the combined for both halves. 43-51 for the second. When was the last one? 44-49 or something? It was 45-49. 45-49. Alright, well, we're going to have an interview in a little bit here, guys. <coughs> uh, this will be interesting to see what Miller's response is. Who should we hang? I feel like Havertz has responsibility for this, even though we yeah. can't play. Okay. Um, well, the Miller Luminati's response would be, we wanted Cobalt to keep playing, so therefore we deliberately lost. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a fair answer, I think. I feel like that's the excuse. Or somebody left their cups in the car and they couldn't stack them because they moved <laughs> together. Something like that, yeah. Oh, I've got that stupid elevator bug, hold on. Right. But, you know, I mean, you did see it, though. It was their Air Force. Their Air Force was a freaking terror, and without the air hammer, there really wasn't a good hard counter. They had some beautiful, um... It wasn't even the air max nests, but the air, but the, the uh, Cobalt Air Force was having none of those max, uh, burster, burster max, uh, anti-air nests. Hmm. You'd see, like, ten ESFs just, just, just raid the crap out of them. It was great. Oh, that's right, the overlay is missing the thing. Alright, just a uh, pointer notes for future stuff. Okay, so looks like we're getting the Cobalt and Miller guys in the interview channel. Let's uh, drop down there now and uh, find out what went wrong for Miller and what went so right there for uh, Cobalt. Hello, chaps. Hello. I guess the first thing in order is congratulations, Cobalt. Oh yeah, that, I bet that probably felt pretty good. And uh, why don't we start with Miller? What went wrong? Hello. Um, honestly, like during during the match, um, if you ever looked on Reddit, there was a lot of talk about uh, a lot of people saying, "Oh, we're gonna lose because of the roster." Now that is partially true because we had a brand new team um, during the um, during the tournament. As you probably saw, looking at those rosters, we had a lot. We had a really core, strong command team, including the not just the force commanders, but we had also the uh, platoon leads and stuff as well. It was all brand new, and we were bringing in a lot of new outfits. Um, you know, not not wanting to bring anyone down or anything, but we brought um, but we brought in a lot of uh, a lot of newer guys uh, compared to our older teams. Um, in addition to that, as well. Um, uh, Oh, what am I trying to say? All right. And um, in addition to that as well, we just tried we tried some new things and made a couple of mistakes in the command level as well. And uh, they just kind of like you know kind of compounded on each other and kind of made things go wrong. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's probably accurate. I mean, from our part, we had a lot of old people returning that uh, were a bit worn out from the last season that now had a uh, I don't know more motivation again really wanting to play, so that probably would have something to do with it. 
And uh, I guess uh, we'll talk about the air control. The was it like a strong team from Cobalt? Like, like your team today, Cobalt. Did you get the people you wanted in today? Play today? I mean, like, how was your team? How did you feel it went? How your organization build up today, and how did you feel the the game went? I mean, was it a good organization? Did you feel everything just kind of went as you wanted it to? Like, because essentially it was two halves, it was two opening plays. I mean, how do you feel that went for you guys? Um, I, well, I definitely like like the the, the system of having two halves. I think. Uh... Most people, uh, at least that I talked to, uh, agreed to that. Um, Organization-wise, uh, mostly what, what I did was prepare my guys to uh, give them the, 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 uh, the opportunity to lead as well as they could. Because I've, I've got some some veteran commanders who know how it's made, so my job basically... I mean, I'm, it's my first time force commanding, so my job was basically uh, just to make sure they could do their job. Um, and on part of the air, uh, that was basically, I, I have to send uh, special thanks to Cooney Bird for that one. I just asked, uh, asked him, build me an air platoon, and he did. And that's, uh, that's interesting. Pretty much. How much air did you guys bring? Because you seem uh, three squads. Shit, three squads. Yeah. It's the strongest three squads that I've ever seen us bring, though. Yeah. And I think that is mm -hmm. because Cooney was leading. Uh, he's Random. very well respected as a pilot. I, and as a, a guy, I thought he led extremely well. Uh, you, you guys did well in the air. Sorry, say again? You guys did well in the air. He yeah. Was good. Uh, got that impression. That's It, it, it always helps in, in service measure. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if the uh, no lock-ons, uh, how, how that affected you guys, if you feel like it, it made the playing fields more fair or less. Like, the lock-ons have never actually affected us, um, mm -hmm. at least normally, um, but that's meant, uh, obviously, I'm not a pilot, so I don't know with regards to the gameplay, but uh, when it comes to sign-ups, they don't usually, they haven't usually affected us, as far as I can tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I actually meant, some, meant more in terms of gameplay, like, what do your pilots think of that? Do they like it? Do they? I, do they I, honestly, I honestly couldn't tell you. I'm not, I'm not the athlete. Alright, fair enough. <laughs> So I guess what I'd like to ask is um, how, see we had the two halves, right? What did you do at the halftime? Did you like, did you change the uh, the gameplay? Did you change like the, um, like did you have your like in your pep top speech? Did you have a time to reanalyze what wrong? Did you realize what we could maybe do differently? Did you have the same game plan for the other way? I mean, did you react to what the enemy did and, and decide how you want to change yourself? I mean maybe you guys want to answer this like did that 15 minutes was it all about you know swap faction move over or swap you know work gate or was there actually some time to kind of debrief de-stress figure out what you needed was 15 minutes enough or do you feel you need a little bit more time to kind of analyze how the enemy played and to make, make a counterplay in the halftime what do you guys think about that i'll let me go first okay uh i have to say i get the most i think i gave the most inspirational speech on a halftime i've ever given um, because it was like, you know, five minutes was super quick debrief. Um, personally, I'd like to see that extended a little bit if we do this format again. But um, what we kind of did during that half time was, uh, we, had, we had a, another thing with the half time thing was it was pretty much twice the work as the FCs, at least for um, our side of it. Um, basically what happened was um, we got all the platoon leads in to have a quick debrief, which took about five minutes, hence the inspirational bit, because it had to be really quick. Um, and then what we kind of did, we had a different game plan uh, for the for the each half, but this is that was mainly due on lanes, uh, due to do with the you know the lanes on each side. So we moved uh, one or two platoons around a little bit, which might have been another issue because we had um, you know platoons having a train on uh, larger areas of the map. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a lot. Um, a lot of it was just seeing, getting feedback, and seeing how they um, how how uh, Cobot played and trying to adapt to that as best we can. Um, yeah, I, I for my part, for my part, would also like to see that extended by a little bit because I, I mean we we did well. We didn't, we only had to fix a few uh, comms issues, um, but even for us, it felt a little short. I, um, but you know, we we also planned for for both halves as I assume anyone would do in in the situation. So we had a battle plan to to go for the second half from the start. We didn't have to. We didn't really adapt anything to that. I think we did a. One or two minor tweaks, but they were really minor. The battle mm. essentially was what we planned. 
So about the maxes then, I did notice that there's a huge number of maxes still being pulled using AV in an anti-infantry role. Uh, did that make any impact? Was it just a, a gimmick? I mean, how did you guys feel about that? It's a bit... Uh, funny, a gimmick. Funny, funny, funny story about that. I got uh, apparently some guys were actually using anti-infantry maxes. Um, I don't know this, of course, so you can check the stats on that, but apparently that was happening. Um, Personally, I hated it because, in my opinion, it, in, in the game it is now, it just makes it broken. It makes other multiplier, other multipliers such as air to ground or on point Sundays a lot more powerful, which is kind of why we brought in the kind of um, you know tried to compromise it a little bit because back in the negotiation I wasn't willing to make it no maxes at all. But I think it's it's a bit of a gimmick, and to be honest, maxes maxes should be allowed in play, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I mean. Uh, I'd have to ask my my ground guys because I I didn't actually I wasn't actually in the fights myself, so I don't know uh, how they felt. Uh, fights were influenced by that. Um, I don't know. Do, do we have anyone from the ground order on Halo? Well, Halo, what did you guys? Uh, I've got to be honest. I most my leading style. I do it mostly from the map, so I didn't see a whole lot. But it was like uh, three quarters of the way through the first round. One of my squad leaders called. He'd seen his first max. So on our lane, it was uh, it was quite a nice infantry battle, and it it was it seemed more tactical. I I think very often in service match, just pulling, you you know a clutch max crash at the last moment is the easy way out of of not leading particularly well, um, and not having them. I felt it made it more interesting on our lanes, but we'll watch the video yeah. back and and study it a bit mm -hmm. more and well. One thing I noticed point. was that um, when Miller was attacking a base, you'd get to the base, maybe it was occupied, maybe it was lightly occupied, you'd dump a whole bunch of people into the base, and that would be your population. There would, it seemed to me there was no reinforcing, and maybe the air control was locking you out. And I also seen that there was no multipliers and no forces around controlling the external areas of the base. So as a result, Cobalt would turn up, the air force would say, oh, I wonder what I want to bomb today, and then just annihilate everything outside the capture building itself. Then, you know, Cobalt would surround the building and slowly crush it, whereas in the reverse, in a Cobalt capture, you know, they would get to the base as, they, as, as Miller would, however, they would dominate the external area. And uh, not only would they dominate the external area, they would spawn camp Miller inside the spawn room, and because they've got air control, then Miller then has to rely on approaching the base externally from other sources, and they just simply couldn't compete in that sort of sense. And that's, and it just every time that was a multiplier. It seems like it was really just the Air Force and then controlling the outside area, getting all the multipliers, getting all the vehicles. I mean, we did see Miller in their initial play, you know, you, like for example, in Tumis, the, uh, the cargo down the south, getting the Sunders into the, uh, you know, the kind of the cap area and then holding at those type of multipliers really, really well. But perhaps some of the inexperience was showing because sometimes they tried it a second time round and they didn't have the right positioning, the kind of right placement, they didn't have the right Sunders, double proxy repair, that type of stuff. So, I mean, uh, at least that's my interpretation seeing it from the eye in the sky and you guys can see the stream from yourself but it feels like that at least in this game Miller's taken a step back in the way how they attack and they approach a game and Cobalt's taken a step forward in, in, in applying how they do their multipliers yeah I think, that, oh, yeah, I, 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 I think that that's probably a, a lot like if, if, if they did really uh, if Miller did, did have, have a lot of new outfits who aren't used to service smash I don't think you can be too harsh on them. If it's if it's their first service match, it's very easy to, to even if you studied it, to sort of get caught up in the chaos, and, and forget your your basic procedures. I mean, I I know even my veterans do that sometimes. That's you know that's uh, on your first match, that's bound to happen. I think we had uh, quite a few outfits as well that have started playing lane smashes and that are aiming to play in the next season. Uh, and that playing lane smashes does teach you the value of combined arms and, and how to use it better. I think we brought quite a lot of that game in, into this uh, this match and it pays off. Cool. Yeah. Well, um, I guess... I thought want to say something still on this. Go ahead. Um... Yeah, like you, like you said, it's just, it, a lot of it just came down to, uh, in my opinion, mostly inexperience with, with the environment because, um, you know, service match is completely different from live play. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a dig at anyone that was playing. It, in my opinion, they did, they did still do really well. Um, it was a, it was a tough game, um, but yeah, I'd, I'd pick that down to, unfortunately, inexperience. But, you know, we all have to start somewhere. 
Well, I guess thank you very much for watching. Uh, to the viewers, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, dear Lord, I did a stupid bet. I'm not sure if you guys are aware. I'm sure you'll see it in the stream later. Um, so right now, um, next week, guys, um, I guess thank you very much for playing. And the next week, we do have uh, Miller versus Briggs. Do you guys have any predictions? Because I think Briggs is actually stat padding their team with some of the guys from Briggs. Is so, it Miller I mean, v Briggs next week? It's Miller versus Briggs next week on Esamir, the North-South match. So uh, do you have any predictions? Right, 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 right. I thought it was Emerald versus Briggs. I think it's Emerald Briggs. Okay. Emerald versus Briggs is next week. And uh, <laughs> we've got Briggs is bringing in a couple of guys from Emerald. So uh, what are you guys' predictions on this game or that match? Do you have any kind of thoughts on how it might play out just before we head off and I talk? I honestly don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I, I am. Sorry, you go first. Well, that's it. I honestly don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, I, 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 mean, I don't know if... It, it, I mean, it always depends very heavily on the team a server brings. It's there, There's no one, em, one Emerald team. I know Briggs might, might be lower population server, but even then, you know, it, it depends on the kind of motivation you go into uh, into the match with, which people you, you get and you didn't get. So I, I haven't really been following that. Well, Briggs is, uh, mm -hmm. as a server, is struggling really badly for population at the moment. I mean, if they can motivate the, their old guard to come back and play, uh, they've got a hell of a team. Okay. And, and I've heard that a lot of the stronger Emerald outfits are, are dying off a little bit at the moment. So could be an interesting one. Mm -hmm. All right, well, cool. Same can be said for Emerald. You know, if they can get their guys motivated and, and bring their strong guys back online, they feel a hell of a team as well. Cool. Well, thank you very much, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed this game. I hope it was fun, uh, you know, for you guys. That was the whole point of it. So we enjoyed it all. Uh, yeah. I'm going to head off. Um, and we'll look forward to perhaps scheduling some, you know, more games with you guys, you know, picking your opponents, you know, just, you know, who you want to play, where you want to play, what content you want to play. Uh, I'm looking forward to the new Indar map changes. That will be really cool. I'm also looking forward to the Ant play and maybe how we can implement some of the base construction stuff. Really psyched for that. I don't know how you guys are feeling, maybe. Uh... Uh, last time I looked at it in in uh, test server, it still looked kind of broken, kind of wonky. It, I I think the concept's interesting. I'm but I'm holding my breath personally. Cool. I'm not in, sure. In Dar interests me a lot more. Yeah, that, that's a agreed. big deal. That will be good. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks so much, guys. I'm gonna head off and um, we'll, hope you had fun. And we'll talk to you guys uh, later when we have like a follow-up matches for you. Yep, absolutely. Thanks. Cool. Right, where's my co-caster? He's in TeamSpeak somewhere. Um, I think I've lost him. Yeah, whatever. Didn't really want to talk to Shaq um, anyway. So, uh, here we are. Uh, we got Server Smash 59 is over. Server Smash 60 is next week. That is Emerald versus Briggs. That will be on the map of Esmir. Bye-bye, uh, web camera. So here we go. Um, we have uh, new maps, new setup. Uh, we've got Server Smash 60. That is Emerald versus Briggs. Coming up on February... The 27th, 20, uh, 2016. The uh, start time is early-ish for Emerald. Midday, I think, for Miller. You know what? I don't exactly know. We'll put it on the Reddit. Um, all our videos can be found on YouTube. Uh, our Plats of Battle is our playlist there. Um, this game will be up uh, soon. We'll export it over so you guys can watch it and enjoy. Um, we'll get the overlay and, and, and all that kind of stats thing back up and running. This is all kind of test games. We're experimenting things. Like I say, next week's SMA game is not going to be two halves. It's going to be one straight up 90 minute battle, closer to akin like a live territory alert in game. So uh, we're just playing around with things and seeing what's fun. And the whole idea is here to have fun. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, we hope you enjoyed today's stream. We hope you enjoyed today's lane smash. There are more lane smashes coming up as well in the next couple of weeks as well, in mix between server smash games. And um, we're looking forward to 2016 and the patches and the updates that PSP throws at us. So again, thank you very much. And we will see you uh, next week.